Come on in, everybody. Sit with your class. Find your teacher. Get checked in. Welcome everybody, sit with your class. You are near your second hour teacher. You are not by yourselves somewhere else. You are with your second hour teacher and your second hour class. Hint, there are no people in the back three rows. That does not exist. to begin. And as you're getting seated, I just wanted to go over some reminders. Welcome to Fine Arts Week. This is so exciting that you're here, that we are here for these performances this week. I'm Mrs. Yancey, one of the music teachers here at Oregon High School. Joined with Ms. Kabish, Mr. Miller, and Ms. Yeager. We couldn't be more ecstatic than to welcome you here. Remember that these are live performances. You have an opportunity to see actual human beings interacting on the stage. I suggest that you stow your cell phones at this time. You do not need to be on them to see anything because all the good stuff's happening right here. Also, really quick, 
please keep your feet off of the chairs. There's no food or drink allowed in the Performing Arts Center. That's how we keep it such a wonderful performance venue. Also, for this type of concert, feel free to respond with clapping and enthusiasm because it is a rock concert. Yeah, I mean, thank you for practicing right now. It's wonderful. We are super excited to be welcoming Herd of Bison. We have two OHS alum, class of 2017, Ben Lakuta and Tony Akale, as well as musicians from the Berkeley College of Music. I think we need to go, so without further ado, Oregon High School, please welcome Herd of Bison. <laughs> What's up, everybody? For a while, my past all twisted. Huh? Would it be this far? If it wasn't persistent and it feels so distant. What does it mean when I'm giving up a lot and I barely reach my dreams? It just makes me want to scream. Every time I came close, it became a common theme. So I've been wasting my journey, getting up too late and going to bed too early. Is this become my favorite? Just a bed I journey. Should I start to worry or should I start to hurry? Huh? Kick it. I'm going to stay right here. I never had a problem because I had no fear. I never thought it would be That's an impression of me, all the aggression of me. This is my only release. Maybe I should have just been in peace. But I'm trapped between fate and another mistake. So for years, I'm saying I've been making a break. Trying to be fair or the great. I wish I could see what you see. But my dreams are the dreams, and it hurts just to think. World ain't as it seems. Every time I blink, my nose deep. Come on, one man, two of the birds don't be.
Arts.
I'm gonna get
obscured, hoping to find some clarity among the terror. Journey through the darkest places of the mind, when the evil within spoke to all mankind. Battled, fought the fear and the loathing, but fell prey to the hopelessness and the condoning. Retreated, allowed the pieces to settle, surrounded by the fallout in which I found awoke, sought to fix the wrongs I had wrought, and rekindle the peace which I had sought. Returned to battle anew, secured my throne among you, and as I fade away into the lore, it seems I have settled the score. My journey fades into memory's crease, my wanderings through. So if I can find my inner peace, I ask, why not you? Tony Akalek over on uh, on rap over there. We got Paul Pacino on keyboards. We got Delaney Glyman on vocals. And we got Francisco Moncayo on guitar. That album is called Lord Buffalo. It will be coming out sometime before the end of the year. Awesome. One more.
Thank you for snapping along. This is audience participation night this evening. <laughs> My name is Michelle Kabish, and I'm the large group instructor for the OHS orchestra classes. And Mr. Miller, where are you, Mr. Miller? There we go. Mr. Miller is my uh, co-teaching partner. He teaches the small group, uh, group lessons and instruction as well. So uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight for our first concert of the 23-24 school year. Boy, it, we put it together quick. <laughs> the school year started less than six weeks ago. Um, and I'm, I have to say I'm really impressed with how well the students have uh, learned all of this music in a very short period of time. Hopefully you had a, a moment to read the program notes and the notes from the teachers as well in the program, so I won't rehash all of those things. Um, but just as, a, as for those of you who are watching on TV and just as a refresher, uh, this evening's concert is called Movement Through Music. And we talked a lot about um, all of these different styles of pieces that you're going to hear this evening, how each has its own meter and pulse and feel and groove. And uh, we're hoping that you will snap along and tap your toes and maybe clap along a little bit as well. Um, one day in the orchestra classes, we, I won't say danced to the music because I know not all students like to dance, but we stepped to the music so that we could internalize the pulse and the feel for each of these different um, dance pieces from around the world. So you heard something that was Bollywood influenced um, by the freshman class. Next, we're gonna do a really cool piece called Fire Dance. You're gonna hear some tangos and some Irish jigs and some classic um, British folk tunes as well. So it's a wide variety of dance music that you're gonna hear this evening. We also talked and discussed how much similarities there are between dancing and playing an instrument, all of the coordinated movements that have to happen on a certain beat or in a certain rhythm. Um, we also talked about how much of the language is in common between dance and music, um, and just how important it is for us as musicians to not just play notes and rhythms, right, but to actually feel what we're playing and communicate something uh, through the, the notes and rhythms that we're playing. So before you hear Fire Dance, it's a very interesting piece. Um, usually, for those of you who know a little bit about music, a piece that's in 9-8 would have a pulse in 3, and you would feel it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right? Three beats equally divided by three subdivisions. However, this composer said, no, nope, we're going to do it in a four feel. And most of the time, it's going to be one and two and three and one, two, three, one and two and three and one, two, three. A couple of times, it's one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. And one time, it's one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. And then in the middle for eight measures, uh, she decides to put it in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it really is keeping not only the students on their toes, but me as well. <laughs> so we hope you enjoy Fire Dance.
hopefully that made you want to kick up your heels a little bit. Um, the next song we're going to play is our first tango of the evening. Um, Astor Piazzolla was uh, from Argentina, and he actually did some classical music study with a composition teacher named Nadia Boulanger in Paris. Um, she was one of the premier composition teachers in the mid um, 1900s, and actually quite a few famous classical com composers studied with her. And uh, so when he came back to Argentina from this period of time of studying classical music, he incorporated that form um, and the harmonies um, of that style with the harmonies and the dance feel and melodies of Argentina. And so the libertango um, was his way of liber liberating himself from classical music, the very strict format of classical music, and also for his musicians to free themselves and enjoy their music and their playing. And so we hope that you also enjoy this uh, tango, and if you feel so moved, you may also move with the music. So, enjoy.
So I'm going to talk here. I don't normally like to talk before they get a chance to play because I know they're out here and they're ready to go. Um, thank you for covering for me. It's not a concert unless somebody breaks a string and apparently it was my turn tonight. So <laughs> I broke a string tuning somebody's instrument so I had to quick run to the orchestra room and take care of that. Um, we are going to pre perform a piece that is a multi-movement work, and so we're asking that you hold your applause between movements. I know that can be hard sometimes as an audience member because you want to cheer everybody on and let them know that they're doing a good job, but do hold your applause until the very end. Um, this is a really cool piece of music written by Gustav Holtz. If you know The Planets, the piece The Planets, this is the same composer. He had a long-term post at the St. Paul Girls School in London, um, and he wrote much of his educational string music for that girls' school, and so that is why this is called the St. Paul Suite. Um, and it's a really interesting mix of dances. The first one is a jig. The, the second one we're doing is actually the third movement called the intermezzo, and it's kind of this juxtaposition between um, a kind of a delicate soft in three, and then it goes into like a country dance, like foot stomping country dance, and then there's like a more impassioned three section, and then it goes back to the country dance, so it goes back and forth between these different feels. And then the last movement, a dargasan, is another dance um, from England. And what's really cool about this movement is that there's two moments in which Holst layers green sleeves, the melody green sleeves, over this jig melody in 6-8. And so the conductor and the musicians have to feel the pulse in one because those are the only beats that really line up. Right? So the jig melody is going to be going da 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 and then the green sleeves is da 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 So you'll hear that in the third movement. So again, we hope you enjoy and uh, do hold your applause until the end.
It's hard to believe that the concert is almost over. One more piece. I hope that you've enjoyed all of these dance pieces and that you've moved a little bit and maybe tapped your toe and snapped your fingers. Um, this last piece, even if you don't know it by the title, uh, Russian Sailor's Dance from the Red Poppy Ballet by Glier, guarantee you're gonna recognize the melody. Um, it's again been used in pop culture, you know, commercials, uh, movies, etc. So pretty sure you'll recognize it. Uh, the seniors have really just do they dove into this piece. There's lots of uh, tricky tempo changes. So you'll notice that they'll start one speed and then they'll switch speeds and go a little faster, a little slower. Um, and it kind of ends in this whirlwind um, of tremolo at the end. So thank you so much for coming this evening um, to our first performance assessment of the school year. And thank you again for your continued support of all of the young musicians and their interests um, and all of their endeavors. Um, really, this is, this is all of us together, you know, um, and none of us could do this individ just as individuals. So thank you so much and enjoy Russian Sailor's Dance.
you want to meet a family with a transgender kid? Here we are. Max loves to do backflips. Max loves to play his ukulele. Max loves to just be a kid and just be himself. When I found out I was pregnant, all I really wanted was a happy, healthy, whole child. And that's what I got. I think it's really important for people to know that trans kids don't have a political agenda. They are just kids. Like any parent, we love our kids unconditionally and we will never stop fighting for them. Stand with us, protect our families. There's only one thing that will save somebody's life, and that is naloxone nasal spray. Get 911 on the phone, get the emergency responses there on their way. OCA Media is out of this world. This exclusive broadcast of Panther Sports is made possible in part with support from our generous sponsors. The Village of Oregon, a great place to live, work, and play. The Oregon School District, actively building competency, character, culture, and community. The Oregon Athletic Booster Club, doing great things for all Panther sports. Your membership dues directly support our student athletes. Consider becoming a booster today. The Oregon Area Cares Community Coalition. Parenting teens is hard. We're here to help. OregonAreaCares.org. Wisco Industries, proud supporter of Panther Sports, celebrating our 75th anniversary in 2024. Culver's of Oregon, welcome to Delicious. Stoughton Health, and by Pizza Pit. Hello and welcome back to another game here at Oregon High School at OCA Media's Panthers Sports, the Lady Panthers here taking on the Beaver Dam Golden Beavers in our final regular season game for the Lady Panthers. Looking to cap off of an amazing regular season with a 24-0 finish with a win tonight over the Golden Beavers. Before we get too far into the broadcast, I'd again like to thank our sponsors who helped make this broadcast possible with their generous support. The Village of Oregon, a great place to live, work, and play. The Oregon School District, actively building competency, character, culture, and community. The Oregon Athletic Booster Club, doing great things for all Panther sports. Your membership dues directly support our student athletes. Consider becoming a booster today. Oregon Area Cares Community Coalition. Parenting teens is hard, we're here to help. OregonAreaCares.org. By Culver's of Oregon, Stoughton Health, and your local pizza pit. We'd again like to welcome Wisco Industries to our family of sponsors, a proud supporter of Panther Sports, specializing, or I should say, celebrating our 75th anniversary in 2024. Source Insurance is our scoreboard sponsor, specializing in personal, business, and life insurance, locally owned since 1978. Well, goal, man, what a way it would be to cap off tonight's senior night, tonight's regular season finale with a 24-0 season and a win here against the Division two number three, the Beaver Dam Golden Beavers. Yeah, well, it's gonna, it's not gonna be easy though. Beaver Dam, a very talented team. Oregon did beat Beaver Dam without star point guard Sam Schmidt on January fifth by nine, pretty handily. But Beaver Dam's been playing very well lately. They're eighteen and five overall, eleven and two conference record. It's and not gonna be easy. Tonight's storyline: Livy Nice is gonna be missing this one as well as potentially the first round or two of the playoffs as she is healing from what she described to be a ligament sprain in her ankle or basically you know kind of an ankle sprain in general she's over there wearing a soft boot but expects to be back in the coming weeks here as we kind of head down the line as playoffs begins next thursday for the lady panthers and uh it'll uh, say a little fair warning for you guys i am feeling a little bit under the weather so so i'm gonna have a little bit of uh, less energy than usual but that is not due to anything we're seeing tonight these lady panthers have worked their butts off all season long and deserve the hype that we've given them and the hype that the state's now given them with the number one overall seed in the division one bracket. So just a little bit under the weather and that's kind of why the energy might be a little lower tonight. Of course, the duty has shown out. There is a hockey game over tonight at the Oregon Barn and that's the first round of playoffs, but the duty looks like they're over here supporting the Lady Panthers as a huge battle. Of course, we do expect the Panthers over at the barn to get it done and very convincing fashion, favored uh, probably to our uh, estimations by around 10 goals against Stoughton in the first round of playoffs. Of course, Oregon the one seed, Stoughton the eight over there that we are streaming that game, I believe, on OCA Media as well. But 
can tune into that one if you'd like. But we'd love you to stay here and listen to me and Cole and the Lady Panthers here on Senior Night. Now we'll pass it down for our opening announcements, guys, and we'll pass it on down. Good evening, basketball fans, and welcome to Oregon High School for tonight's Badger Large Conference matchup between the visiting Golden Beavers, the Beaver Dam, and your Oregon Panthers. At this time, to honor America, would you please rise and fable, remove your hats, and join in the singing of our national anthem. Beaver Dam High School, Oregon High School, and the WIA require good sportsmanship by student athletes, coaches, and spectators at education based interscholastic events. We request your cooperation by supporting the participants and officials in a positive manner. Profanity, racial, sexist, or ethnic comments, or other intimidating actions directed at officials, student athletes, coaches, or team representatives will not be tolerated on our grounds for removal from the site of competition. On behalf of Oregon Athletic Director Brittany Spencer Grant, good luck to all coaches and competitors. We hope everyone will enjoy tonight's event in the spirit of positive sportsmanship. Please join me in welcoming tonight's officials. We have Ben Graber, Vincent Pitaro, and Greg Steffen. Gentlemen, thank you for your continued efforts in supporting high school athletics. The Panther sports community would also like to thank Cole Krieger and Luke Marks for their excellent work all season announcing Panther basketball on OCA Media. Cole and Luke will be graduating this spring, and while we wish them well, we will miss their bye-bye play and hard work. A big round of applause, please, for Cole and Luke. And now, let's meet tonight's starting lineups. First, for the visiting Golden Beavers of Beaver Dam. A 5'6 sophomore, number zero, Shea Marie Ashley. A 6'2 senior, number one, Gabby Wilkie. A 5'11 senior, number three, Riley Zarnecki. A 5'11 senior, number 13, Annika Salatel. And finally, a 5'9 sophomore, number 31, Natalia Donaldson. Beaver Dam is coached by Braden Wentz. And now, the starting lineup for your Oregon Panthers. A 5'6 senior, number four, Brooke Bastion. A 5'8 senior, number 10, Caitlin Studebaker. A 5'7 junior, number 14, Clara Tracy. A 6'1 senior, number 15, Delaney Nine Ice. And finally, a 5'5 senior, number 34, Sam Schmidt. Oregon is coached by Adam Wamsley, assisted by Mackenzie Rognes and Dom Winners. Well, on mine and Cole's behalf, thank all you guys for the applause and stuff. And uh, congratulations again to our four Lady Panthers seniors on their amazing careers as we kick off their final regular season game as Panthers looking to wrap their careers up with a perfect regular season, guys. 
24-0 is on the line. Panthers have struggled against the press recently. Let's see if Beaver Dam opens up in it. Be very interesting to see, but not quite yet as the Golden Beavers will open with the possession. Starting things off here, it's number three, Riley Sarnecki. Sarnecki dumping over to Shea Marie Ashley. Shot three there is no good, but an offensive board for Sarnecki on the cut there. Another miss off a wide open layup. Panthers struggling to collect the rebound. It'll be a jump ball there, but Gabby Wilkie had a wide open layup that she missed, and Panthers will gain the possession off the possession arrow, and Beaver Dam does open in the press. Full court press, all 10 players in the front court. Nine Heist will leak outside, Sam Schmidt. Now the pressure does come off, so not really a true press, just a ball to eye off the inbounds. Back cut from Nine Heist. Schmidt works the baseline, spinning at the left block, finds Studebaker. Studebaker will find Nine Heist. Panthers going small here because of the absence of Olivia Nice. It's Bastion, top of the key. One of four seniors for these Panthers playing their final regular season game. It's Schmidt working. Top side will work over to Clara Tracy at the wing. Tracy, one jab, steps outside. Good contest there. Number 31 there. That's Natalia Donaldson on the drive. Schmidt travels. And a mistake there from Sam Schmidt as she questions the ref down there at the baseline. But Panthers now come out and oppress themselves. Good defensive possession to start this one by Beaver Dam swarming all over the Panthers. This is Wamsley's patented ball pressure that we see every single game from these Lady Panthers, no matter what the roster looks like. On the drive there, no good. Offensive rebound, Donaldson will go to the line for two. Mr. first layup, but got the rebound and is gonna get to the line. Natalia Donaldson, just a sophomore for these Golden Beavers, still with a bright future ahead of herself in Beaver Dam. A thing I've noticed while looking on Wisp Sports heading into this game, Luke, is that the Beaver Dam Golden Beavers, a very good free throw shooting team as she just missed that one. That's and right. also a very good three point shooting team, shooting at over 34% from beyond the arc, something to watch out for. They really, really, really struggled the first time these two teams went to battle in Beaver Dam, shooting just three for 26 from three there. Panthers gotta be smart every time they aim on the ball. Beaver Dam will throw pressure right, right away and then seemingly drop off of it. It's Bastion, will shoot the straightaway away three. High off the glass, no good. That's too strong, but an offensive rebound for the Panthers. That's a travel from Kaelin Studebaker as a second such penalty in as many possessions for the Panthers here. Something to monitor early as the Panthers pick up two quick travels as it looks as if these refs are quick with that whistle. Yeah, Panthers tend to start a little slow within the first couple of minutes. We'll see how they bounce back from that. Got to make sure Beaver Dam does not kind of extend a lead as the Panthers are known to start a little bit slowly. On the drive, Tracy pokes that one away, but collecting the loose ball and scoring is Shea Marie Ashley. And these Golden Beavers are also a very young team. Lots of 2026s in this class, only four listed seniors as well, but only one junior. Yeah, they're on probably the, the they're probably the favorites next year for conference. That's right. Of course, the Panthers will return Tracy, Schenecker, McCabe, and Nice. They're four big contributors for this team this year who will be returning. Here is Clara Tracy shot four for seven from three last game, and that one will go out of bounds. Nine Heist could not handle the pass there as good defense from Gabby Wilkie forces the turnover. Just once again, a little sloppy play here from the Panthers to open up. We're, we're used to this. It's nothing new, but hopefully. Panthers, they got to sure up because they can flip the switch again. They play a team like Verona in the playoffs. Verona also known to extend leads and get big leads just like these Panthers. Here's Wilkie on the three. will put it through, and the Golden Beavers jumping out up six to nothing early. Panthers got to get a bucket on this possession. They'll start it off with Bastion. She'll go to right side. Clara Tracy at the right wing. Jab, step, looks to create some space. Dumps off at the elbow. Studebaker will spin in the paint. The right hand is going to fall. And the Panthers' first points of the night come courtesy of number 10, Caitlin Studebaker, the senior. And you're funny that it that you see, Luke, first time they didn't open up in that press. Panthers get an easy bucket. On the drive, great D help defense by Bastion there. Forces the loose ball, but Natalia Donaldson does come up with it. Here's Shea Marie Ashley working at that left wing, Shill. Dribble over the right side now, works it back out. Beaver Dam trying to get some action going here. Number three, Riley Sarnacki with it at the left wing. She dumps it back to the right side. On the drive, Wilkie will miss the layup. Gabby Wilkie, another wide open miss layup. That's her second already missed layup on rather very open shots. Bastion again trying to fit it in the nine highs, and again she can't handle the pressure and has it 
go out of bounds off of her body. Luke, like you said, Gabby Wilkie's missed two kind of easy bunnies so far. She is Beaver Dam's leading scorer, averaging over 17 a night. Did hit a three. That's right. Three points to her name. Probably should be seven, though. Definitely. Beaver Dam should be up 10 to two right now. Panthers can consider themselves lucky on the drive. The Taya Donaldson spins through pressure. Wilkie again will dial up a three. In again, connect. Timeout Panthers as the Golden Beavers start out hot. It's nine to two, Beaver Dam. Gabby Wilkie, 40% three-point shooter. Clearly the best three-point shooter in this game for both sides. Hot start for the Beavers. That's right, Panthers gotta do something here after the 30-second timeout. And like we talked about, Cole, Beaver Dam really struggled from three-point land last time these two played. So Panthers really gotta do better this time because I imagine the Beaver Dam will not struggle as much this time as we've already saw in two of the three threes they made in the last game already here in the first yeah. three minutes and 40 seconds but of this one. Like we usually see, Luke, we've been calling all these home games for, these, for this girls team. Every time out of a timeout, Coach Wamsley gets his girls fired up and they're gonna come out hot, Calms I them down a little bit yep. and they kind of fire out. It's these first couple of minutes where they falter and then a timeout quickly from Coach Wamsley gets their heads back into things and get them under control. Yep. It is an emotional night, it is senior night. A lot of emotions. Panthers just need to settle down a little bit, get into their offense, find what works, and Two they'll come right back. best teams here in the Badger Large going to battle. Panthers looking to stave off an upset and finish their regular season campaign undefeated. Beaver Dam looking to give the Panthers their first loss of the year. Bastion is fouled right away there by Riley Sarnecki. Bastion was looking to create space with that rip through and kind of got fouled in the arm by Sarnecki who just was reaching in a little bit too much. Got some contact and that one will be called every time. Bastion will start again for Oregon. They're gonna kind of run through her offensively. She's a great passer for this team now. She does find Sam Schmidt, the number one scorer for this team. Her and Delaney Neinheis do a lot of the scoring, but Studebaker does as well as she connects in the triple and up to five points are Caitlin Studebaker, all five of the Panthers' points coming at her expense. Tracy will defend on the outside at Sarnecki. She dumps off her number 13, Annika Salatel. Haven't called her name much yet. Salatel is another player for these Golden Beavers who does a really, really good job scoring the basketball. Dumping it off inside. Oh, that could have been a steal for the Panthers, but Sam Schmidt really lost the ball under her own feet. Claire Tracy will take a seat. Tegan Schenneker to the game. As for the Golden Beavers, it's Shea Marie Ashley who will come out of the game, taking her place, number 23, Emma Jolka. Beaver Dam only rosters 11 players, but only 10 appearing here tonight. Nine high soul wall up on Wilkie, and Wilkie will miss strong, and Studebaker pokes the rebound out of bounds. Again, Panthers gotta do a better job collecting those rebounds rather than giving Beaver Dam another chance at a score, because Wilkie very well could have knocked that one down. They're gonna try and get it to her again. Nine Heist gets a hand to it, but Wilkie does control. Wilkie flips that one up again, no good, and Gabby Wilkie has really struggled everywhere but that three-point line so far from the field. Yeah. Nine Heist doing a good job down low. She always does, Cole. One of the better defenders in this conference. Here she is working that right side. Now we'll hand off to Bastion on the cut. Bastion, jump stop, kicks to Studebaker. Can she keep it in bounds? Yes. Working on Donaldson, a little sham god there. Kicks to Schmidt who pops out for a three. No good, and the rebound there falls into the hands of Gabby Wilkie. Schmidt does a really good job creating those extra step or so of space. Got herself a good look. On the drive there, that one's taken away by the Panthers. A lot of bodies kind of running into each other. Bastion makes the catch, dumps off to Nineheis. To the corner, here's Studebaker. One jab, now dumps off again to Nineheis. Loves working that inside. Does miss, rebound is loose, gets in the hands of Studebaker. Schmidt inside, can't handle it. And that pass probably forced a bit much by Bastion. She wanted Sam Schmidt, but Schmidt had two defenders all over her. Man, look at Nineheis and Wilkie just Go into battle down there at that right block. That's a matchup we're gonna see all night. There's a three, no good, and Nineheis collects the rebound. Jolka's first shot is a miss. But yeah, Cole, as you said, it's gonna be Nineheis and Wilkie just fighting all night. Panthers really playing without a lot of their bigs and committing the foul there is Wilkie sending Schmidt to the line. So Nineheis gonna have to do a lot for these Panthers tonight and play a ton of minutes here in a game that essentially is meaningless in terms of 
uh, postseason hopes because the brackets are already out. Everything is settled, and so other than senior night, this game is essentially, I don't want to say meaningless, but the, if they were to get a win, it wouldn't doesn't mean affect much. Yeah. anything. Schmidt, better, one of the best shooters from the line on this team yep. out of the game. Sam Schmidt coming off, I believe, tying her season high at Lakeside Lutheran Tuesday night with 18. Could be completely wrong about that, but had a really good game Tuesday night. Hasn't scored as much this year as she did last year, allowing players like Nine Heist and Studebaker to get their own buckets there. I think that's an inadvertent buzzer from the scorer's table over there. Well, get a re-inbound from the Golden Beavers. Schmidt did go one for two from the line. Panthers have closed that Beaver Dam lead from nine to two to nine to six. And it's Bastion who will just run that full court defense. We know she has the stamina just sliding with the point guard who makes the catch as we always see with her whenever she's in the game, that full court pressure. Deep three there is no good from Wilkie. That might be a bit of an ill-advised shot. Donaldson and Studebaker battling for the rebound. It does become a jump ball and will stay with the Golden Beavers. One sub for each team, Tracy for Bastion. And for the Golden Beavers, Donaldson will come out of the game. Taking her place is Ashley. Shea Maria Ashley on the drive. The layup is good there and easy as you like for Sarnecki. Schmidt makes the catch. Interesting to see kind of how they match up with Wilkie here as Nineheist does sit. Can't play the full game. Okay, finds Tracy. Claire Tracy with the one uh, with Wilkie on her. Gets her in the air at the block. Now has to give up to Studebaker. Wilkie just so much taller than everyone else kind of on the floor right now. Listen, at six foot two on the drive. It's Schmidt, gets to the baseline. Good ball denied by Ashley. She gives it to Schenecker, back to Schmidt, head fake. Now Schmidt works that left wing area, finds Clara Tracy at the top of the key. We know Tracy can shoot it and will do so at will. Schenecker spinning with the right hand and that is a beautiful thing to see from Schenecker scoring kind of at the angle she has to with Wilkie, getting under that right arm and flipping it up on the finger roll. And what do we say, coming out of the timeout, Beaver Dam, his lead is cut to just three. Again, they're really fighting down there with Wilkie. This time it's Schenecker going to battle. McCabe does a good job walling off Cesar, or Sarnecki on the miss there. Wilkie again struggling from the field. Just those two threes, the only points to her name. I believe 0 for 6 from inside the arc and one or three, 2 for 3 from outside of it. Schmidt fouled on the way up there, but I think it's going to be on the floor. Annika Salatel is the one who called the, or was the one who had the foul called against her, I should say. They do call it on the floor. Bastion and Nineheist will check back in for Oregon. Sam Schmidt will come out of the game and Caitlin Studebaker. So back to this Wilkie versus Nineheist battle. Panthers, only one true point guard on the floor right now. It's Bastion. They're going to try and kind of run things through her, see if she can facilitate to other players. Bastion, not known for her scoring, but does a great job defensively and on the passes there. Somewhat of an inadvertent pass there, had it tipped, but the Panthers do keep the possession alive. It's Reese McCabe, good defense played by Shea Marie Ashley. Here's Schenecker, stutter step, gets to the elbow and kicks to Tracy. Now they dump it off inside. This is where you like Nineheist. She does get it and scores. That is right where the Lady Nineheist does a lot of her work and cuts the Beaver Dam lead down to one. Working down low, that's Delaney Nineheist's special. Shea Marie Ashley, good contest by Schenecker. Again, rebound is being battled for between Wilkie and Nineheist, and this time the Panthers gain possession. Wilkie and Nineheist going at it, trying to rip the ball from one another's hands. Now Wilkie will check out along with Emma Jolka. Into the game, it looks to be Donaldson there. Same with Sarnecki. Bastion gets the inbound. Neither Mackenzie Gritschmacher was the one who checked in there. Bastion loses the ball, now gets it back. Working on Salatel. Now it's Tracy, dumps off to Schenecker. Schenecker working, creating space. Fall away, no good. Bastion the rebound, the left-handed lay is good. Look, Bastion again. One of the unsung heroes for this team, especially on the offensive glass. She just does a great job for someone her size, being about five foot six or seven, 
There's a, that should have been a travel. I think at least there's the layup. Gritzmacher will score, but man, Panthers got to feel a little bit robbed on that possession. Yeah. That was a great block by Neinheisen. I don't think she ever lost Took possession. Off, Tracy gets a wide open look from three, does shoot a little bit strong. McCabe goes to the floor, gets the rebound for Oregon. Great effort from her. Bastion works inside, is blocked by Shea Marie Ashley. I love to see the Panthers get more to nine heists as we see Wilkie out. Yeah, She'll now transition check back there. In. Ashley threw it away over the head of Donaldson. Sam Schmidt and Kaylin Studebaker back in. McCabe and nine heists who go to the bench. So that's this time again, Wilkie into the game, nine heists out of the game. We'll see who draws the matchup. Probably Shedeker or Studebaker. Panthers yeah. got to get the ball in here. I would have loved to seen the Panthers tried to feed Nineheis down low with Wilkie out, but couldn't get it going. Got to imagine with Nineheis out, Wilkie would be doing the scoring for Beaver Dam low in the post. Yep. But again, we've seen her struggle. Shedeker's done a inside. good job on her. Another good jab step there from Tracy. She finds Bastion. Bastion goes inside, speeds past Wilkie. He is fouled on the way up. Panthers will earn two more shots. That's also Wilkie's second foul. Another thing to monitor here, as she's gonna be in a lot of foul trouble because she's gonna be f finding herself in that post all the time. Yeah. Six foot two, that low defender. Love to see the Panthers, whoever is guarding her, kind of sit low so she's the one who's being the help defender. And then a lot of time, if there's a lay, the help defender is the one who gets the foul called against her. That's already her second foul, and you gotta imagine she's gonna come out here. Yeah, it was kind of weird to see because they kind of blew the whistle early before Bastion even got to Wilkie. Bastion does connect. And I don't even think Wilkie touched her, but they'll call it on Wilkie. Yeah, Wilkie seemed confused. She was pointing at herself like, they called that on me? Nope, they Wilkie. just changed it. Wilkie only has one. They called it on number 13. I still see two on there for yeah. Wilkie on the scoreboard, but uh, the score at the scores table, they said number 13, I believe. They changed it. Salatel. Salatel, who I believe just took a seat yeah. for Sarnecki. Yeah, they do fix it. Now Salatel, the one with two fouls. So she's the one who's in trouble. Do look to try and get Wilkie in foul trouble, though. Donaldson spinning and a really good shot creation there from Donaldson, who puts Beaver Dam back up, too. Back and forth we go here. Both teams, whatever you can do, I can do better. Sudebaker draws Wilkie. Got to look to go at her. Get her in some foul trouble. Get her out of the game. That's where she can't hurt. She was on the bench. Schenecker here. Drives. Spinning on Sarnecki. Sarnecki pokes it away. Schenecker gets it back. Spinning again. That right hand. Really good. Schenecker is loose and a foul against Beaver Dam. I think they're going to get Sarnecki on that one again. Yeah. It's also her second. Beaver Dam's fifth team foul. Nine Heist will check in here for Schenecker. Into the game, that's Julka and I believe also to be number 12, that's Abby Gutnacht. Into the game for Beaver Dam. Nine Heist spinning, working, and has it blocked away there off of the shoulder of Nine Heist out of bounds. Beaver Dam basketball off the block there. Coach Wamsley wants a Explanation looks puzzled, but I believe they called it off a of nine heist because they blocked it and then it hit nine heist in the shoulder. Yeah, I, th I think you hit and on the head. At least it Luke, looked yeah. like that's the only real explanation for it. Wamsley's still puzzled over there, right. but we play on a Shea Marie Ashley looks to get Beaver Dam back up by two scores. Working on Bastion, dumps off to Donaldson. Natalia Donaldson inside on Studebaker. Can't get the layup to go, but will shoot two. And Beaver Dam, not the biggest team, but very quick for their yeah. size. Well, Luke, Taya Donaldson. Luke, like I said earlier, this Beaver Dam team really good at the line. Their top five players shoot 83, 71, 84, 80, and 71% from the line. Those are very good percentages as announcer jinx once again as she'll miss. Give you a high five up here, Luke. That's right, the announcer jinx working in our favor for once, Cole. It never does. Beaver Dam just one for three from the line. Donaldson does connect on four. the second, so. Again, Beaver Dam pushes the lead to three, but Panthers stay within a possession here. It's Schmidt. Works on Donaldson. Schmidt stagnant. Panthers got to look to get some action here. Schmidt gets a screen from Studebaker. Now we'll find her. Nine Heist redirects the pass. They dump it off to her, and Bastion has it poked away. 
Jay Marie asked you, run the other way. Schmidt will defend the rim. We'll kick it outside. Here's Wilkie, head fake, spinning on nine heist, right hand, and finally gets a score that's not a three. Wilkie up to eight points, extend the Beaver Dam lead to five. Yeah, and an arid pass. Studebaker hey, gets the three go. to go. Caitlin Studebaker up to eight points. She has improved so much as a three-point shooter from her junior year to now her senior year. It has been impressive to watch, Luke. I mean, she went from being a role player for this team to being probably the, the best defender. The best defender, one of the best three-point shooters on the team. Schmidt there fouls the shooter on the recovery. Don't know if I agree. I don't agree. That's I think it's just call. the action of running towards the shooter. Yeah. And then kind of getting in her way rather than like actually having bad position. Because her position was fine, but I think it's just her closing down on Jolke there. Jolka, that caused the foul. But again, Beaver Dam missing the first free throw. Cole, keep telling us about how good of a free throw shooting team Beaver Dam is, please. Well, I don't have Jolke on my list, Luke, but. Beaver Dam, again, just three for six. One for two from the line. All three times Beaver Dam's gotten to the line, they've went one for two. Yeah, so. they've missed the first every single time and made the second. Something to monitor for the Golden Beavers that Cole Krieger is trying to cast a spell. So cast a hex on them. Finds Studebaker. They want that entry tonight. Tracy's open. Tracy. Ooh. Player was wide open in the corner. They missed her. Here she is. Dials up a three and hits. Called it. That's right. I mean, she was right in her shooting pocket. You put the ball right there and she's ready to shoot. Spotting up in the corner, did not move, was set, ready to shoot. And that's the shot you want every time. Panthers tie this one back up. Ooh. Studebaker almost got a handle. It's Donaldson. In trouble in the paint. Kicks it back outside here. Abby Gutnacht at the top of the key. Good pressure from the Panthers. Here's Shea Marie Ashley. Goes baseline. Good help from Bastion and Tracy. And they force the miss. And Tracy collects the rebound. Panthers looking to go in transition. Now Schmidt will slow down as the Golden Beavers catch up. Schmidt works right, loses Ashley. Crossover inside, finds Neinheis on the cut. That could have been an and one, but Panthers, I believe that's their first yes, lead of the first night. first lead of the night. That's right, Panthers, 2119. Man, two of the best teams in the state going to battle here at OCA, on OCA Media right now, guys. On the follow away, Donaldson, that's a pretty looking shot, but Again, a bit early in the possession there yeah. for uh, no passes. Ooh, Tracy again had that spot up look, but great recovery from the Golden Beavers denying that transition three. Here's Bastion, goes past Wilkie, kicks to Schmidt. Entry pass again to Neinheis. Look at Bastion in the corner, but Neinheis with a mismatch as Gutmach uh, cannot defend her there that well, but Neinheis can't make her pay. That's a possession you want. Nine Highs getting that shot every time on Gutnick. You see her laboring there as she's working hard defending Maddie Wilkie in the corner. Jolka misses the three. Rebounds loose. Bastion does come up with it. Nine Highs and Wilkie look lethargic in the best way possible, I would say. They're both tired from working hard. Here's Nine Highs gets a good look but misses. Again, Bastion chases on the offensive rebound. Right handed lay is no good. And this time, Wilkie gets the board. It feels like every loose ball winds up I mean, in yeah, Bastion's hands. Yeah, look at hands. Wilkie. Look at how far down the court she's trailing. Not even going to be a part of this possession for Beaver Dam. Donaldson looking to create. Gets to her spot, but cannot finish. And Donaldson, for only being 5'9", does a really good job getting to her spot in the post and getting a good look. We'll shoot two again. Schenecker and Reese McCabe are checking in here. I think we'll see Bastion and Neinheis head of the bench. And again, Beaver Dam misses the first free throw. Donaldson has shot over 100 free throws on the year. I can see why. I mean, she gets Drives to her spot, and uh, you get fouled a lot when you get there. I see here we see Wilkie out of the game. Here's the tight chance. You've got to get the ball to Nine Eyes. You know she's tired, but final three and a half minutes. Wilkie's up the floor Five right now. You have to capitalize. And here's Nine Eyes on the cut. That's as easy. easy as you can get of a bucket right there. Timeout, Beaver Dam. They get a full timeout right there, and the Panthers surging a little bit. Their biggest lead of the night up five. And Cole, what did I say is you want nine highs in these last couple minutes. This is her time right here in these last 326. As long as Wilkie is off the floor, you have to get the ball to nine highs every time. Yeah, that's true. And 
interim head coach Braden Went has had such a good year for the Beaver Dam Beavers, 18 and five, talking over with his team right now, just trying to settle them down. Is he not the official head coach? No, on on Wiss Sports said he was an interim head coach. I don't know what happened to start the year, but interesting. I imagine he'd be getting hired as the full time. They've had yeah. a great year. Young team, And of too. course, like you said, Cole, should be the favorite to win this conference next year. Of course, the Panthers are no slouch next year, but losing four of their key players is no easy task. Yeah. I mean, we saw it last year with the boys. They lost Jack Ralsey, Evan Miles, and Quinton Bush, Billy McCorkle, Casey Scheneker, and they retooled solidly, returned Vaughn Carvalho, guys like that. They didn't have a bad year. Going to finish right around the uh, 9 or 10 loss mark, and... Again, hopefully should host the first round for us on OCA Media as about an eight seed, but again, a team that should have brighter days ahead. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of the Lady Panther team of our sophomore year, Cole. Uh, they were solid. Three seniors. But nothing like too crazy. Yeah. And again, next year, they another had story of very facts. few seniors. Ryan Dins. And is Ryan Dins the only senior next to Zach Powers? Carson, Carson Hanneman. Hanneman. Hans Kiesel. That's true. A couple more than I was thinking of. There's Schmidt on the pressure. We'll get another easy lay here. Gets the defender in the air. Oh, and another miss. That's a shot you got to have if you're a Panther. We get yeah. Beaver Dam the ball. That's a absolute must make shot right there. Remember, Beaver Dam down four, have missed five free throws. Leaving points out there. Yeah. McCabe will take a seat for Bastion as we'll see kind of how Wamsley and Coach Braden went. will manage these last couple of minutes. Now we see Wilkie check back in. Chetaker pokes it away. We'll have a free two points for the Panthers. Caught Shea Marie Ashley sleeping. Great ball pressure here. We're going to get another. Oh. Very close, Sarnecki was not ready, and again, that could have been a travel. Panthers doing an amazing job defensively. They're gonna count the basket? This is not the NBA. We do not have a continuation role in high school. How are you counting the basket there? That's I, ridiculous. If, she's, if she was fouled at all in the possession, she was fouled like the elbow. Shea Marie Ashley goes to the bench, looking into the game. They do count the basket, man, that is, that's something. It's a bad call. I mean, there's yeah. no continuation in high school. As soon as the foul happens, the play is dead. Another, Another miss free, free throw for Beaver Dam. That's up to six. Leaving points on the board. The Cole Krieger hex is working, guys. Scheneker, again, shines so far tonight for these Panthers. Doing a great job. And the time she's getting here with the right hand. And again, oh, man, that one looked good to go. Nine heist misses, gets it back again. This time from the right side is fouled by Wilkie. That'll be her second foul, but in a much better position to get a second foul with 2.15 to go than with 8.15 like we originally thought. The Panthers have been so good on the glass this year, out rebounding their opponents, nearly two to one. 9.05 to 5.32 are the rebounding really just numbers. Put that on Nineheis, who is averaging a double-double yes. at this point. And again, Panthers, just we talked about Beaver Dam, they shoot amazing from the free throw line. Yeah. No matter who's at the line, you really feel confident. I mean, we saw it against Monona Grove, Cole. The Panthers were up by 25 at halftime. Monona Grove came all the way back, and the Panthers were at the line late and really, really, really did well. As I shouldn't have mentioned it. Ball's loose on the floor. It's going to be jump here again, probably. It's got to be timeout Panthers. They do get the timeout off before the jump ball. It's a great usage of the timeout. Keeping the possession error in your favor and keeping the possession in your favor as well. Panthers up five, a chance potentially to make it 10 before the half here. Kind of have everything in their favor. They have the ball, they have the possession error. Beaver Dam is, the Beaver Dam is down, the Panthers are feeling good. And this is the chance where a Panthers team who we know is not the best in the first half can try and extend yeah. this thing to double digits and then look forward to the second half where they're always better in half number two. And once again, we saw it last Saturday against the Forest right here in this very gym. That's right. The Forest opened up with the press and were swarming the Panthers. Beaver Dam only for the few few couple possessions. And even then, it wasn't really a press. It, it wasn't was just that like press. it was a press off of the inbound. But the Panthers as as the were struggling and they went away from it. And now the Panthers are running all over That's them. Right. They had them nine to two, over. and then here's a twenty-four to eleven, twenty-four to twelve run, doubling up Beaver Dam. Yeah. 
Nine Eyes gets it in. Ooh, could have been fouled on the way up by Wilkie, but a miss. That's another good shot from Nine Eyes. You want that shot every time off the inbounds in that spot. That's a high percentage shot every time. There's a miss in the three ball by Beaver Dam. Was Salatel in the miss? Schenecker speeds past Donaldson, who's got the shoulder in her every time. Oh, and wow, Salatel caught that one without looking. Just threw it right into her hands. Jolka probably going a little bit too quickly. Smart to pass out. Salatel's three is good. Monica Salatel cuts the lead to two. Her first points of the night have not called her name much. Again, that's probably not the best pass there. Panthers do maintain possession with Bastion. She jump stops the elbow. Needs to find a pass. Does in the form of Tracy. Bastion dumps off to Nineheis. Kicks to Tracy. Again, that time Tracy could not handle the pass. I would say they're giving her a lot of space, but that's just the length of Gabby Wilkie. She can block that shot from still having a couple feet between her and Clara. Yeah, it's kind of interesting to see her guarding Clara. She's guarded her this entire possession. Nine heist, that's a, that's a great foul. time. Again, you get her to that spot in the low post, and you got to expect either points or a foul almost every single time. Delaney Nineheis really good from the line. You really don't you really, you really don't look at centers as good free throw shooters, Luke, but she is one of them. Her and Wilkie both. Again, a lot of the centers, especially in this Badger Conference, really the Badger Conference as a whole does a great job at the line. Can't really pick apart any one team for being bad free throw shooters. Yep. For the Golden Beavers here, we see number five, Mackenzie Gritzmacher back into the game will take the place of Riley Sarnecki. 57.2 to go, you gotta imagine these will be the fives that will end the half there as I think they're gonna get lane violation of the Panthers. Yeah. I believe they called it on Nineheis herself, actually. Yeah, Delaney called that it was off from the from the and, moment. Uh, that took, it, off the, yeah. took off before the shot at the rim. Yep, exactly. To <laughs> That's get what her I was trying to say. Yep. Can't do that. When the moment it left her fingertips, she knew it was off. It's almost always helpful, except for when you're at the line and you just step into the paint before it hits the rim. Ooh, Nineheis hit the deck there. And the shot is good from Gabby Wilkie. Nineheis slipped there. No real like crossover move to make her slip, just Not at all. trying to fight her on the screen, lost her footing, and Beaver Dam has come back within one. They dump it off to Nineheis, the double comes. Bastion makes the catch to the left wing. They dump it off inside to Scheneker. She's working to create space with the right hand and scores. 16 seconds, you gotta imagine Beaver Dam will take the last shot of the half here on this possession. Try to get Wilkie open, get something. Unless the Panthers come up with a steal, it's Wilkie with six seconds left. Potentially a Wilkie three to end the half. Beaver Dam, it's Wilkie, right hand, leaves it short, and the Panthers go to the break, up three and a half that I think they should feel pretty darn happy about. I mean, yeah, after a slow start. Beaver Dam has done a lot better than they did the first time around from the field. And again, the Panthers have had a lot of good looks, just did not fall. Could very well be up more than three points. Again, if you think back to a couple of different nine high shots low in the post that she missed, some free throws left out there. But again, Beaver Dam also has missed six free throws. And they're one of the best free throw shooting teams in the state, Cole, as you talked yep. about. Both teams kind of should feel like they've left points out there, but also should feel happy with their first halves. Well, Luke, you know it's going to be a good game when Wisconsin's governor, Tony Evers, is in the house tonight. That's right. Supporting his granddaughter, Tegan Scheneker. It's going to be a good one, I think, in the second half, Luke. Yeah, Cole, excited to see how this second half turns out. But we will go to break here on OCA Media just for a couple of minutes' time as we'll be back around the three-minute mark before the second half begins. <laughs> This exclusive broadcast of Panther Sports is made possible in part with support from our generous sponsors. The Village of Oregon, a great place to live, work, and play. The Oregon School District, actively building competency, character, culture, and community. The Oregon Athletic Booster Club, doing great things for all Panther sports. Your membership dues directly support our student athletes. Consider becoming a booster today. The Oregon Area Cares Community Coalition. Parenting teens is hard. We're here to help. OregonAreaCares.org. Wisco Industries, 
proud supporter of Panther Sports, celebrating our 75th anniversary in 2024. Culver's of Oregon, welcome to Delicious. Stoughton Health, and by Pizza Pit. the OCA Media press booth up here. I'm Luke Marks, alongside me is Cole Krieger. And Cole, the Panthers out ahead by three as we come back from break. We'd again like to thank our sponsors who helped make this exclusive broadcast possible. The Village of Oregon, a great place to live, work, and play. The Oregon School District, actively building competency, character, culture, and community. The Oregon Athletic Booster Club, doing great things for all Panther sports. Your membership dues directly support our student athletes. Consider becoming a booster today. Oregon Area Cares Community Coalition. Parenting teens is hard. We're here to help. OregonAreaCares.org. And by Culver's of Oregon, Stoughton Health, and your local pizza pit. We'd again like to welcome Wisco Industries to our family of sponsors, a proud supporter of Panther Sports, celebrating our 75th anniversary in 2024. Taurus Insurance is our scoreboard sponsor, specializing in personal, business, and life insurance, locally owned since 1978. Well, Cole, Kind of in the last 40 seconds of halftime, I'd like to get your thoughts on half number one and your outlook on half number two. Well, Beaver Dam, the story for them is just make your free throws. They've missed six free throws. I think they're four out from four out of ten from the line. That is not good, and that's not what they're accustomed to. Usually shooting way above that, and that is why they're down by three. If they would have made a few of those, this is a completely different ball game. A lot more energy probably from that Beaver Dam bench, but they kept it close, and I mean, they yeah, played really well. That's certainly a reasonable assessment, Cole. Obviously, they're down three, and they've left six free ones out there. Panthers themselves have kind of struggled on the easy one. Sam Schmidt missed a really easy transition lane. Nine high school, she hasn't missed any, like, gimmies. She has missed two shots that are always in her arsenal that you love to see her putting up every time. So... Definitely happy with the Panthers' shot selection in the first half. They're not settling for today, yep. is what you like to see. They're getting to their spot. As and well as Beaver Dam, shots. really. There's only been a couple possessions I can pick out where Beaver Dam has not who it has huddled. Here's Schmidt off the screen. Four threes, no good. Wilkie correct, collects the rebound. I think the watch is that Wilkie came out of halftime and was limping a little bit coming off the bench out of the break. I mean, her and Nineheis have been going at each other. There's a layup and good That was a good find by Sarinsky. Annika Salatel. Sarnecki on the assist. Here's Bastion. Finds Clara Tracy off the screen. And they love to go with that screen off the uh, wing. Something we've seen the Panthers do for years with Sam Schmidt getting her a lot of good threes. Nineheis. They want the entry for Studebaker. She's being denied well, but Nineheis getting to the spot. Left-handed high off the glass, no good. Rebound is scrambled for and controlled by Annika Salatel. Comes Shea Marie Ashley with it. She hands off here to Sarnecki who goes inside. Pass Bastion wide open and misses the layup. Rebound is loose and controlled by the Panthers. Sam Schmidt will let traffic catch up. It's Bastion in the corner. She finds Studebaker. Sam Schmidt at that deep logo position. Goes to Tracy who finds Studebaker. Studebaker on the drive at the baseline. Gets a defender in the air and scores with the right hand. Getting her in double digits as well as Maddie Wilkie. So those two with 10 apiece. Comes Ashley again. Stutter step finds Donaldson who this really isn't her position as she goes inside now. That's her position and she scores from it. 
She's had a lot of those just dribble drives in, just beating the defense and she's very a lot of the easy shots. For, yeah, uh, the kind of shot selection she likes to take. You don't see a lot of post scorers that are fast, and she is one of them that's shown her ability there. Here's Bastion with a top of the key, finds Sam Schmidt. Sam's looking for that three ball. She's hunting for it. Hasn't quite gotten a look she's been happy with in these last couple possessions. Here's Bastion. Panther lead is one. She gets to the block, kind of walled off by the taller Wilkie. That's a tough position for Brooke to be in on Wilkie. Here's the mismatch. Nineheis kicks to Bastion. Great head fake. Bastion goes inside. Right hand, no good. But again, that's a great give and go. All the way, there's Ashley who again, Really no help there from the Panthers as Shea Marie Ashley went to the hole. Yeah, Beaver Dam's come out hot this half. Studebaker in trouble, finds Clara Tracy. Again, Donaldson probably could have had a steal there and that's a travel as Clara Tracy kind of saw that right foot slip out as she went for the jump stop. It wasn't really a jump stop, it was more of a slide stop and that's kind of why they call the travel. Yeah, Beaver Dam firing in all cylinders coming out of this half. They've been playing well and they're getting to their spot down to the low post. Yeah, that's right, Cole. See it again here as a Shea Marie Ashley wanted that dribble drive, was denied well by Brooke Bastion. Here's Donaldson who again loves the dribble drive. Kicks for a three, Sarnecki misses. Bastion probably doing too good of a job on the box out. Allows Beaver Dam to get the rebound. Donaldson again, dribble drive, kicks to Ashley. Shea Marie Ashley will reset things for Beaver Dam. A couple of crossovers, kind of walks down to that elbow and gets Stolen away by the Panthers. It was Bastion first, then Studebaker cleaned it up. Here's Schmidt, she'll dribble drive herself. Gets to the left block, in, scores in the foul. That's a big make right there over a taller defender. Sam Schmidt has shown an ability to do that throughout her varsity career. And right there, scores over top of Annika Salatel. Schmidt right about 5'8", five, 5'9", five, five, Salatel listed at 5'11". Not an easy shot, but Sam Schmidt makes him pay. Schenecker to the game for nine high series. Salatel will take a seat for the Golden Beavers. Emma Jolka into the game. Schmidt does connect and finishes the three-point play. Gets the Panthers back out ahead by two. Jolka here will bring things up for the Golden Beavers. She's struggled so far tonight from a scoring aspect. She kicks to Shea Marie Ashley. Dribble drive, kicks, shot three, Wilkie, no good. But an offensive board, and Donaldson makes the second chance, points count. Beaver Dam just with a lot more intensity so far in this half. Panthers have to re-extend the lead. It's Studebaker, tries a three, in, connects! Kaylin Studebaker, just what an incredible three-point shooter she has become. Three for three tonight, Luke, from beyond the arc. Showing no signs of slowing down. There's Joka, who capitalizes off the double team the Panthers threw at Wilkie as she crossed half court. Panthers is looking a little stagnant on defense. That's an ugly look from Bastion there. Panthers do a good job there pressuring Wilkie, but Beaver Dam does come away with it. And back the other way comes Shea Marie Ashley. Brooke Bastion will pressure her as she always does right away at the top. Here's Schalke, works to the right side. Dribble drive, Sarnecki is fouled on the floor by I think Schmidt or Clara Tracy there. Gonna get Tracy on the infraction. Yeah, they'll get Tracy on that one, second personal. Nine highs will come in here for Tracy. Panthers just not a lot of intensity on defense so far. Beaver Dam kind of just running around them, finding their open looks. Ooh, Bastion almost poked almost that out one of off. Bounds. Ashley out of bounds. Able, she fell into the bench, but is able to come back onto the floor now. Yeah, that was really close. I thought she was definitely out. Dribble drive again by Donaldson. Kicks outside. Wilkie going to try a deep triple and air balls it. Oof. Man, as we kind of take a quick pause in the action, Panther, over, Panther hockey is up 5 nothing with still 10.40 to go in the Second period, Cole, that's just what we expected over there at the yeah, home bar. Yeah, definitely. Andrew Jakey's back. James Shervin, I believe, is back. Back next game. Back next game, that's correct. Coming off of his academic suspension. Schenecker pulls up a bit of a laser there from Schenecker from the mid-range. Wilkie collects the rebound. Overrated chant coming here. Wilkie stepped through. That's a pretty move in the finish for Matty Wilkie. Oh, they call it travel. travel. Wow. That was a really, really good move. I mean, you can't up and under any better than that. But they do get her on the travel. 
I don't know that I necessarily saw it that way, Cole, but. I don't know either. There have been a couple kind Again. of odd travel calls, and that was the first one that went against Beaver Dam. I think you've got to reward the shooter there. That was a great, great usage of a up and under, and she kind of got shafted. Schmidt at the left wing, finds Bastion. Screen comes from Schmidt. Bastion works right, gets the switch, goes inside. Careful not to travel. Schmidt can't keep it in bounds. And a turnover. Well, both teams starting to slow down a little bit. Beaver Dam, Cole, you're right, came out firing, but the Panthers did a good job staving that off. And now both teams, as they settle in, have started to miss a couple shots in a row and turn the ball over a little bit. Dribble drive there. Shea Marie Ashley gets a hit from Studebaker that sends her to the floor. That'll be a foul on the floor. So Studebaker picks up her third personal foul early on here in the second half. Studebaker got to be careful now because if she picks up a fourth, she'll have to sit for a while. And yeah. she's been the Panthers' best score tonight, leading all scorers with 13. Man, wow. that's a great look, but Shea Marie Ashley just did not get what she wanted out of it. And a it was foul. great D on, by Scheneker. I think she got a piece of that. It's also an uncomfortable spot right there, directly under the hoop yep. as the defenders are closing in, especially as a short player. Yeah, got caught in no man's land, you could say. That's right. Scheneker off the inbounds for the Panthers. She works left, finds and actually could not find Studebaker. Donaldson, head of steam, works past Schmidt inside, creating space, offensive foul. Just kind of saw that one coming yeah. from a mile away. Donaldson had a head of steam off the steal and just never really looked up from uh Yeah, Schmidt kind of, Schmidt did a good job of kind of absorbing that. I think if you're foul. Donaldson there, you just, you gotta be a little more patient, man. Like, that's a another time for Beaver Dam where you're settling for the first look and while Donaldson is a high percentage shooter from that low post, yep. you gotta look up and find teammates in transition. Scheneker tries a three ball, leaves it short. Rebounds loose, still loose and controlled by. Schmidt almost got there. Yep. Man. Studebaker just fell, open look. Does miss though. Offensive rebound for Jelka who will shoot two. Well, That's a time where the Panthers have to feel they Kind of yeah. came up short. Around five minutes left in the first half, Coach Braden went, was getting on his team about rebounding, and they have responded. Just out rebounding the Panthers on the offensive end. This is another one of those times where if you're Coach Wands, you think about getting in a quick timeout in and yeah. kind of calming your girls down here, as we know, out of timeouts, the Panthers are very, yep. very effective. And Luke, it is still tied at 37 apiece, but Beaver Dam has outplayed the Panthers in this half. Absolutely, Cole. But again, they go up the line. Once again. Now down to seven missed free throws. Here's Claire Tracy working on Jolka. Gets a screen from McCabe. She'll dribble baseline all the way through the baseline. Finds Sam Schmidt in the corner. As she was working back to the wing, got in Sam's way on the attempted dribble drive. Here's Tracy again. We'll kick it back over to Sam Schmidt here. Trying to get an entry to somebody. And now Scheneker and Nineheis flash for the screen. It's Nineheis, left hand. Ooh, and that could have been a foul, but Scheneker strips it, misses the reverse layup, and Nineheis is fouled on the way up. This time it's the Panthers on the offensive glass. Again, Nineheis, especially, I feel like every time she gets her own offensive rebound, She's either at the line or she's yeah. making the shot. No, you're 100% right. The first right. time, it's a little bit less of a percentage, but every single time she gets the offensive rebound, there's some, some way she's going to get a look. I thought that foul was on Wilkie, but it was not. It was on number 23, Jolka. Perhaps a bit of a... Uh, so Wilkie will remain at two fouls. Sigh of relief for Beaver Dam there. Is yeah, I think Wilkie thought it was on her too. Studebaker and uh, Wilkie with three fouls would have been very, very interesting. Rebound is loose. Scheneker, ooh, is going to be... Ball. We're gonna call it kickball on Beaver Dam here, I think. Yep, they do call kick on Beaver Dam. I don't know. Okay. That's an interesting way to keep the ball with the Panthers. I think they probably could have just called a common foul on Beaver Dam. Yeah. For Schenneker falling. Schenneker kind of just lost it and went out of bounds. But I, uh, I didn't really see a kick ball. Yeah, I would have thought Good common find. foul. There's Nine Ice again, getting to the line there, and we see rather upset Riley Sarnecki. Couple extra swings, and I think. Pop Nineheis in the face a little bit. Nineheis is just looking for maybe 
a little something extra, like, can't be hitting me there. Yeah. As the fans are also looking for a similar call. So, weak move from Sarnecki, I would say. No need to flail the arms for extra. Nine Heist does connect in the first. Another big make there as we see Shea Marie Ashley and Nataya Donaldson into the game. Going to take Sarnecki out of the game as well as Mackenzie Gritzmacher. A couple of seniors for Beaver Dam checking out right there. Two of the four as well as Gabby Wilkie. Nine Heist does connect She's in the second. She's been good That's from the line tonight. Big shot right there. Gets the Panthers up by three. Here comes Joka for the Golden Beavers. Finds Annika Salatel here. Salatel gets a screen from Wilkie. Now we'll find her off the pick and pop action. They get it to Natalia Donaldson. Let's see if she goes to that dribble drive. Instead gives to Salatel. Salatel wants Wilkie. Goes for a back cut. Joka wide open for three and an air ball again. And you gotta feel for Beaver Dam on like the three, it's either it's going in or it's a bad miss. Yeah, There's they've no airballed a lot of shots. That's their third or fourth air ball. Yeah, they haven't been terrible from three. No, I mean, they've made a lot of threes. But, like, there's no like miss off the rim, I feel like. It's either it's gonna be really bad or yeah. really good. Salatel kind of on skates with Schmidt. Sam Schmidt now works back left after getting a screen from Nineheis. Finds Reese McCabe at the top. Schmidt trying to set a screen, did not get much or any of the screen there. Here's Nineheis who comes to get it from McCabe. Gonna reset things here for Oregon. They call the set, it's McCabe and Schenecker at the elbow. Schenecker sets the screen. Schenecker now pops open. Chance to enter it for Nineheis. Schenecker here, dribble drive. Floater, no good, and that's a, I like that shot for Schenecker. Not something we've seen her go to a lot, but Kind of one of the more versatile shooters for these Panthers, kind of can shoot it from wherever on the floor. One of the few you can say that about. Effective from all over the place. Donaldson, ooh, man. That was a late call. That's right. Panthers were already headed back down the other yeah. way. It was Schenecker headed back towards the other basket. The ball hit the back, the bottom of the rim, and then they called it. And again, Donaldson going to the dribble drive here. Another Beaver Dam, like we talked about. Donaldson has shot so many free throws this year does make that one. But two for three on the night for her from the line. Bastion and Studebaker into the game. McCabe and Schmidt will take a seat. So Studebaker had to sit for a little while with three fouls, but now we see her come back into the game. Again, she leads the way for Oregon with 13. Leads the all scorers with 13. Nineheis again has 11. Wilkie has 10. And uh, Natalia Donaldson has 11. There she does miss. So two for four from the line for Natalia Donaldson. Not what you expected for somebody who shoots as many free throws as she does. Tracy goes baseline, finds Studebaker on the runner. Nine nice jumped a little early. A lot of arid passes for the Panthers tonight, too, especially in the first half. This Very one coming sloppy in the second, second half, yeah. I would say, from both sides. The first couple of minutes were a little better, but I would say from around the 15 minute mark up until now, it has been really sloppy both ways. Yeah, I agree, Luke. One of these two teams will sure it up, and I think that's the team that's going to come away with it here. We haven't really seen the Panthers pull ahead like we're used to. And then Beaver Dam, one of the better teams in the state there as they tie it up on the lay from Shea Marie Ashley. Beaver Dam ranked in the Wisconsin State Coaches Poll Division II, number three. Panthers ranked number two overall in the state at number one in Division One. There's a kick ball from Wilkie. But two of the best teams in the state going to battle, and would you expect anything less than a tie game with eight and a half to go, Cole? Yeah, it's going to be a good one down the stretch here. A nail biter. Panthers looking for their first ever undefeated season in program history, dating back almost 100 years. And for Beaver Dam, looking to pull off the upset. Schmidt re entered for Nineheist there, and a foul from Joka. She pulled the chair on Bastion a little too hard. Pulling the chair is always a good decision, but kind of like when they're headed downhill, it's always going to be a foul because of the way the player's going to hit the ground. Jolka with her third will take a seat. Back in the game for her, Mackenzie Gritzmacher. Beaver Dam has put the Panthers in the bonus here for the rest of the way, so a one and one opportunity for Bastion here. Schenecker will take a seat after a great shift from her. Nineheis will come right back into the game after a very quick rest. She's played almost this entire second half, as well as Maddie Wilkie. 
Bastion does make the first. A very big shot there. Yeah, a huge story in this one has been free throws. Oregon flat out out shooting the again, Cole, Golden Beavers about. from the line, and that is why they find themselves up one. Yeah, that's right. Again, it's been the story of the year for the Panthers. Very effective with the free throw line. Bastion connects on them both. And Panthers are going to need it. Every time they get fouled for the rest of the way, it'll be free throws, and you've got to make those shots count. Yeah. Beaver Dam has not done a great job doing that. They've missed eight free throws, and that really is the difference here. No disputing it. Wilkie, they're going to lob it up to her. Double comes. Schmidt and Neinheis, but Wilkie is fouled by Neinheis. Doesn't miss the layup, but will shoot two. Wilkie kind of hesitated there and kind of let Neinheis recover on her, causing her to get to the line. She had Schmidt on her. Schmidt just five foot six. Bit of a disadvantage. Yeah, I think that uh, fronting the post on Maddie Wilkie is not going to be Good. in your favor, no. I would say. And she does make the first there. Nine heist, not the best vertical. She is six foot one, but doesn't exactly jump that well. Wilkie does connect on both free throws. She's going to have to do a very good job for the rest of this game because she's probably going to be shooting a pretty good amount. Bastion, the lay is good. Good take and by Bastion. That is just an excellent finish from Brooke Bastion from the left side with her off hand. No help defense at all. Wilkie afraid to get that third foul. Deep three, there is an air ball again. That time it was again Annika Salatel missing the three badly. Like Panthers we said. Panthers student section letting her know. So many air balls. That one actually looked good from up here, Luke, from my angle. I thought it was gonna drop. For me, it didn't look good to me, but uh, that's gonna go off of Oregon. Clara Tracy tipped it out of bounds. That's a costly turnover for the Panthers, who actually they do rule it yeah, they do rule it in favor of Beaver Dam. I couldn't tell what the ref over there on the baseline was pointing. I think he was saying that he wanted to be overruled by another ref. They're still talking it over, I believe. All right, now we start things. Beaver Dam will get the ball with Wilkie. Makes the catch. She's denied well by Schmidt. On the cut, Salatel can't handle it. Trying to keep it in, she does. Good save to Gritzmacher. Now back to... There's a wide open shot, and Donaldson, that's not her shot, but a rebound by Salatel, and the layup is no good. Rebound is loose, and Shana, Studebaker controls. She is going to sprint at Wilkie, and Wilkie blocks it away, but we'll stay with Oregon. we got to go at her there. It's a really good decision yep. from Studebaker not to fear the bigger defender there. Schneidecker in for Tracy. See Jolka will come in here, taking the place of Salatel. Panthers gotta settle in. A two possession lead would be huge right here. Take any points you can get. They enter it to Schneidecker. Schneidecker working at that right elbow, kicks to Schmidt. Schmidt back to Schneidecker. Schneidecker gets to her spot. Oh, and a big miss. That would have been huge. Like you Had said, the shot, Luke. but Beaver Dam. Wow. Blows it. They had Donaldson all the way to the hoop for a free two points. And they threw it over her head. It's the second time tonight where Donaldson leaked out in transition and had a free layup. And again, Shay Marie Ashley threw it over her head. Beaver Dam leaving points out there, man. It's been the story of the game. Really got to feel like Beaver Dam has taken this game away from themselves. They truly have. They're still, I think, I, I still think they're outplaying Oregon slightly, but I agree. Just but Cole again, on the basket. points on the board. Yeah. Schenker does miss the turnaround there. Beaver Dam has numbers. It's Jolka. The right hand is going to be good, and Beaver Dam ties it back up again. You see Abby Gutnick getting worked on by the Beaver Dam trainer over there. It looks like she was cramping. Rather, that's actually Annika Salatel working to get yep, you're right. over there. Cramping in that calf area, I assume. Nine Ice to her spot, and again, a miss, but does get her own rebound. Somehow that got to Nine Ice. This time with the right, she does finish. She shot so many shots down there in that low <laughs> post. So many opportunities, so many second chance opportunities, and again, it's that second chance opportunity that gets you the bucket. Ooh, are they gonna call a foul away from the play there? I think on Nine Heist, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, for the Panthers, you gotta think that's not the worst case scenario. I mean, at least it wasn't a foul on the shot. Yeah. But still, Just Beaver, Beaver Dam Dam possessions. Chance. Really couldn't tell if that was, oh, Bastion. The teams did not share possession for more than half a second there. They did call jump ball, but Bastion 
Another feisty. good job ripping it away. She's so feisty for her yeah. size, man. Annika Salatella check in here for Mackenzie Gritzmacher. 6.29 to go. Panthers lead by two, Cole. Was never going to be an easy never one to get to 24-0. Wilkie does miss the three. Studebaker would just let that one go out of bounds. Panther student section really getting into it here. Leading the, trying to lead the Lady Panthers and will them to a 24-0 season here, Cole. It's Studebaker working past Donaldson there. Oh, but again, risky handoff as Shoko got a hand to it. Bastion does control for Oregon. 6-10 to go, Bastion picked her dribble up, finds Schenecker there at the wing. Schenecker, jab step, gets to the paint with the runner and connects. Timeout Panthers, full timeout. What a big shot there from the young sophomore. On the runner, on the floater with the right. We lo love to see Tegan taking that shot. She loves to shoot it. And that's one of the higher percentage shots that Tegan Schenecker has in her bag. Yeah, and she was being guarded by number 13, Annika Slattle, who once again was cramping, came out of the game, and just went back in the game. Looks like she's cramping again. Yeah, Salatel struggling over there on the bench with those cramps. You gotta kinda go at her and make her work because again, as much as you hate to say it, you're gonna make her cramp yeah. up again and you're gonna put her in an uncomfortable position. So anytime you can go at her or Wilkie, who is very clearly either injured in this game or just very tired, has had maybe a minute on the bench, a couple of minutes on the bench the entire game, she has something going on. She was working on kind of her thigh over there by former boys assistant JV head coach, or JV head coach, I should say, Dan Steen over there, coming out of halftime. She's kind of been wincing in pain off and on. You have to go at Wilkie, at Salatel. As much as you don't like want to exploit injuries, you have to in a situation like this. It's yeah. do or die. You got to do what you have to do to win. Wilkie here, a quick pep talk to her ladies over there in the Beaver Dam sideline. Trying to escape Oregon with the win. Give the Panthers their first loss right before playoffs. Final six minutes of the game. Start now. Salatel will inbound. Panthers bring pressure. It's just drop pressure though. No true press. Schmidt and Shea Marie Ashley. Schmidt pokes it away. She does keep it in bounds, finds Bastion. Bastion to Schenecker, should have an easy layup, but goes at the bottom of the rim, does make the follow, man. You had to bank, if they did not get that, that is yeah. just a waste. That would have been such a big miss. Luckily, Schenecker keeps her composure, gets her own rebound, and no Beaver Dam Golden Beaver hustling back there besides Joka. And again, Salatel's cramping again. Beaver Dam, I believe, yeah. now in the bonus? Yeah, they are. Yeah. Salatel is cramping again. She's limping. It's that left calf. She is feeling it. I mean, I you can't sub her out because she's can't shooting. Sub her out, but it's just after she, this, you got to you, you have to. Yeah, she she's not taking. I'm imagining time. that Mackenzie Gritzmacher will yep. come check in for her here, but two free throws while cramping or a one and one does make it. That's a gritty make right there. Keeping her composure while well under cramps. Yeah, Panthers largely to the half. Up, up six, now. now up five. I expect the Panthers Salatel to maybe start pulling away. Does make it, gets the heck out of the game. Two she's clutch free throws limping from her, off. And she's limping. She's doing her best to try to stay in this one. Man, imagine if she would have missed that though. That Had to stay bad. in the game off the cramp. Yeah. But again, she's grabbing that left calf and trying to give her water and do what they can to help her out. Schenecker right to the cup and two. Tegan Schenecker, man. Now up to 12 points. Bastion trying to pressure the ball there. It does go off of her hands. Claire Tracy will come check in here for Brooke Bastion. But Tegan Schenecker has had a great second half here. Yeah. Cool. Making the easy ones. And as much as you say they're easy ones, in a high pressure situation like this, you have to keep yeah. your composure. You have Schenecker's, to make the easy ones. She's done a great job keeping her composure just for being a sophomore. And out of the timeout, the Panthers starting to get a little bit of that momentum back. Stay used to that Schenecker name. We saw it with Casey, we see it with Tegan, we'll see it with Kendall in a couple years. Schenekers are a prevalent family here in Oregon. And a three from Mackenzie Gritzmacher. Cuts the lead down to three. That's a huge shot to cut the lead to three. Now it's only a, a one possession shot game. right there. 
That is objectively not a good shot. That one poked away. Schmidt didn't really go for it, letting Beaverdam take possession. On the runner, Gritzmacher cuts it to one. Man, interesting to see. Sam Schmidt just kind of looked the loose ball and did not really, you gotta, you gotta get in the ground for that one. Possession arrows in your favor. Keep the possession. Don't give Beaver Dam easy oh, ones. Oh, good catch by Tracy. Tracy elevating, making the catch. Steps outside now. Here's Sam Schmidt. Clock with four minutes, 10 to go. Panthers trying to stave off the upset. Schmidt, the mid-range jumper, good luck, and that good is luck, good luck. nylon. Good luck. Sam Schmidt, gotta had it, got, she had to have it, and she got it. Jolka, that is, talk what about settling, that's that? not a good shot. Just Terrible. giving away a possession. Chance to cut it to, to tie the game, or cut it to one again, and you do that? Schmidt. Oh, had a good look, but again, I think, I, you know, take time off the clock, why not? You'll get another fine shot, whatever. Beaver Dam, next time on offense, needs to not settle. Oh, Schenecker again. Even. They're just trying to, they're trying to take time off the clock. I respect it. And you get nine highs here. High percentage in the post. Does oh, score. Good call, Luke. right good call, there, man. Good call. No, you're right. You get the extra 30 seconds off the clock, and you get the score anyway. And the Panthers are hyped up four, up five, five. rather. And man. That's great. You really cannot ask for a better possession. Out of the Panthers. I mean, that is the perfect end of game possession, right, Claude? I mean, you take 35 seconds off the clock, you get a great look from your best three-point shooter, Sam Schmidt. You get a great look from Tegan Schenecker. They were not contesting her. They were okay with her taking that shot because she was open, she passed it up, and there was no pressure. She, she was yeah. sitting there with it, wide but open you, But you gotta think that if Schenecker or Schmidt took that shot and made it, it could have been I the dagger. I mean, dagger, obviously, but you can't be upset with two two points there. Yeah. You're gonna, if you got Delaney one-on-one -on, -one on the post, it's a high percentage shot no matter who she's going up against. And, Again, there, you get a high percentage look, and she makes it count. Man, Cole, final three minutes and 19 seconds of a nail biter here at Oregon High School. This is probably the best girls game we've called all year because the rest of them have just been flat out blowouts. That's right, man. <laughs> Quite unusual. That's what happens when you get another competitive team like Beaver Dam. Sweating it out here at Oregon High School, Cole. They get it up to Jolka. 3.15 remains in the regular season. Here's Donaldson, works past Shannon Studebaker to the hole for two. Donaldson so good on the drive, Luke. She has the versus how bag on the dribble drive. That time went to the behind the back. Man, Sam Schmidt saving the Panthers there. What a catch through Jolka. Here she is with it. They call the handoff action. Bastion Foul. to the crown, but got it to Schenecker. They're calling the handoff action here. It's that tap in the head. Schmidt works past Studebaker. Now finds Schenecker at the top. Stalling, 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 stalling. In trouble with Schenecker. She finds Nineheis. Hands off to Schmidt. Nine Heis will set the screen here. Schmidt works past it. In some trouble here. Has no dribble, finds Schenecker. She'll set a screen for Tegan. Sarnacki works under it. Now Schmidt with 2.20 to go. Panthers taking as much time as possible off the clock. Sham God, floater is no good. That'll be Oregon basketball, I think. I, yes, yeah. it is. Wow. That went off the hands of Wilkie. I thought it was really close. I thought they might have saw it on Nine Heis. But no, it went off Wilkie. Crucial there, Cole. Beaverdam just needs to get the ball back. They gotta. They're Panthers, letting Oregon yeah. stall. They're hey, not Panthers doing a pressure. good job, though, fouling. of stalling. They don't have fouls to give. They can put the Panthers at the line whenever they want to, and they're just not doing it yet. You gotta imagine here in the next 30 seconds, we'll get the kill call, and they'll start fouling. But yeah. you cannot afford much more time line. to come off the clock. Of course, it is still a one-possession game at the time being. Now the clock's under two to go. Three-point game. It's the Panthers and the Golden Beavers, two of the top 10 teams in the state. Two teams with state championship hopes. It's Schmidt. If you're gonna follow, you stutter. cannot put Schmidt, Schenecker, or Nineheis to the Schmidt line. In trouble, finds Bastion. 
I mean, there's really no player in the court here you want to put at the line. That's what I'm saying. It's got to be a foul, man. Yeah, there you go, finally. I mean, they were just hacking Sam that Schmidt. That is not the person you want to send to the line if you're Beaver Dam. Our the best free throw shooter in this team besides Claire Tree. You gotta get Claire on the court. I mean, obviously, like, there's nobody on the floor right now that you're not, you don't want the no, line. No, you're right, but you're Claire 100% does right. does shoot 90% from the free throw line or 92. But so, if I was Beaver Dam, I would have fouled Bastion or Studebaker. Yeah, Bastion had the ball for like 10 seconds. Yeah. You could have fouled her. And again, Beaver Dam took so long. They weren't even attempting to foul, but they did. They took like a minute and 30 off the clock. That's as about as good a possession as you can ask for. Panthers up three with a chance to make it four or five. Again, still in the single bonus, so it will just be a one and one. Huge free throw coming up for Schmidt. She makes it. Got to get the first to earn the second, Cole, but a big first free throw looms ahead right now. Yeah, if she can push this lead to four or five game, I'm not going to say it is 100% over, but it's going to be you a stretch feel comfortable with where you're for at. Beaver Dam. Panthers and Golden Beavers vying for position here. Atop the Badger Large Conference. In this game, Luke, if it was played a couple years later, it would be completely different with the shot clock coming to the state of Wisconsin. That's right, Cole. I mean, I believe that we started with the 2026-2027 season. No, 2025-26 yep. season. So when we're sophomores in college, shot clock will finally be a part, a welcome, welcome change to high school basketball in my opinion. It's been needed for years, and finally we're gonna get it here in two more. So next year will be the last year without it. Huge free throw. Schmidt connects, oh my. You just feel the <laughs> air come out and fall back into the gym. Rattled around the rim there for a second. Ooh. Stayed up there for a while, man. Extending the lead to two possessions. This free throw does not mean as much. You would love it, and it does go. Sam Schmidt. Cool, Deep. calm, and collected, Luke. Been here before, Cole. I mean, this team made a sectional final appearance as a four seed last year. They've felt plenty of pressure before here, Cole. It's nothing different to them. Of course, the exact same thing we saw last year in a huge, huge block from block. Nine Ice. Swatting away, Wilkie. That was not the look Beaver Tam wanted. It's the one they got. That's a foul on Schmidt. She'll go to the line for one and one again. A chance to give the Panthers a three possession lead. Two free throws here from Schmidt. Probably seals it. You gotta think it's three possession yep. lead with a minute and 13. And you never know though, Cole. Crazier things have happened, so. There's another one. Schmidt connects. Three of her last three. Five of six of the night on the line. Closing out her senior year with a couple of clutch ones. Panthers up six. Can she make it seven? To put herself in double digits on senior night, Sam Schmidt. And with a Brooke Bastion three feed here to put every senior <laughs> in double digits. That would be awesome. On the dribble drive, it's Salatel who makes the layup. Up to the five. With a minute and one second to Fouled go. To nine heist. It's not really the player you want to put in the foul in the free throw line. Panthers got to get it across here. They do it with Bastion. She is poked away though. Donaldson, you got to think head of steam in the basket. Foul before the shot. But she'll so shoot free she'll throws. She'll shoot one and one here. Huge free throw from Donaldson. She's Looking made ahead, a couple so has far. Gone two for four from the line tonight. Shot over a hundred free throws this year, Cole. Yes. She's a shot chance a lot to bring tonight. Beaver Dam back within one possession on two makes. Wow. But she's got to have them both, Cole. I mean, no two ways about it. You have to have both. She does make the first. What a high arc. Yeah, free throw. I was going to say very, that did not very, look good. It's a very, very like uncharacteristic freak throw for somebody who shoots so many of them. But yeah, it works for her. So we're not going to judge. A chance to bring them back within a possession. She does miss off the high glass. That's, that's out, of be out of bounds. Yep. Man, three for six from Donaldson and the tenth missed free throw of the night. That's huge. That was a two possession game, like you said. Keeping it at two possessions. Beaver Dam has to score twice or get fouled the three. Oregon student section. That tomahawk chop. They get it to Schmidt. Schmidt fouled right away. And again, obviously pressure in the corner, but unfortunately for Beaver Dam, here's double bonus for Sam Schmidt. So even if she does miss the first, she's got two coming. First personal, 
I mean, Beaver Dam, I mean, once again, all of the Panthers on the court right now, good free throw shooters. Claire Tracy now on the court, by the way, Luke, like you said. Must but have you, again here for the Panthers. You can't foul Sam Schmidt. She's going to make every shot. There it is There's again. There's another one. Yeah. She's ice from the line. Ice. Anybody else would have been a better option the foul. Absolute nails from the free throw line is Sam Schmidt. And I say Claire Tracy's a better free throw shooter, but nobody's a better clutch free throw shooter than Sam Schmidt. That's true. And she puts it in again. Six straight free throws for Sam Schmidt. Puts the Panthers back up six with 47.9 to go. And what have I been saying all game? It's free, free throws, throws are going to win throws, the man. game for one of these teams. Beaver Dam has missed, what, nine, ten, ten. free throws? Panthers have missed probably less Couple. than five, maybe and three or four. Been huge uh, late. And again, it's... That's something we've seen all year for the Panthers, man. Clutch free throws, and that is a trait of a state championship team. Yep. Clutch, clutch buckets. They do not falter under pressure. And again, the Panthers here. Yeah. Now Beaver Dam, Luke, you said that they had 11 players rostered, 10 on the, are bench. On the bench. I just realized Aspen Abel, number 30, has appeared in eight games, a 44% 40, three-point shooter. That is a huge story in this one that she's missing this game. She's not even on the roster. Really? No, not on this printed roster we have up here. No, yeah, you're right. Uh, with sports, she says, says she's averaging 11 points, eight games played. But again, that's a very, very interesting thing to see. And like, there's... A cup. I mean, they've what got a seven-woman rotation because there's two of them over there that haven't played. Yeah, JV, couple JV players. And they've only got nine on the bench actually. Or no, is Saltel off? Is Saltel in the locker room now? No, she's right there on the floor. So they do only have nine on the bench. I must have miscounted earlier. So they're missing two from the roster, and Sable's not even on there. You said the Aspen Sable, not even on the roster. Ball's loose. Panthers come away with it. It's Schmidt. They're going to come. That's got to be a foul. They don't call it. Here's Bastion. Brings it ahead. That's a foul. And they call it on Shea Marie Ashley. One free throw here. Puts him up three possessions with under 30 to go. Elsewhere in Oregon, the Panthers are up 9 nothing on Stoughton in the first round of the hockey playoffs with still almost the entire third period to go. You said it was going to be a 10 nothing, Luke. Your prediction, pretty close. Might even be more than that. Bastion does miss the first, but... Again, a second chance here. That's Beaver Dam, 11th team foul of the half here, Cole. Yeah, remember, Beaver Dam is a really good three-point shooting team, but it's going to take quite a miracle to get back in this one. Got to have it here. Does not have it, but She'll she gets get her, her own rebound. rebound. There's a foul. They tie her up. And two more for Bastion. Who cares if you miss two? Just go get your rebound and kick a couple more. It feels like Bastion is around the rebound every time. I mean, right, that's her third or fourth offensive rebound of the game. She had six offensive rebounds. She's five foot six, guys. Yeah. They got a six foot two player on the court. They got another five foot 11 player on the court. Like, Brooke Bastion, stud in the offensive glass. This time connects. That's a three possession lead call. And again, two more seconds bled off there as the rebound was being contested. I mean, Bastion, really an unsung hero for this team on the offensive glass, creating second chance points. Cole, we talk about it all year. The Panthers on second and third chance are just nails. And Bastion is a huge part of that. There's a three, and it's good from Mackenzie Gritzmacher. Just a little too late, I Don't think. Don't count him out yet. Down five, Cole. And I hate this like a broken record, Luke, but the free throws, I mean, if they just made five of the ten that they missed, it is a tie game. Well, made, obviously, they wouldn't have intentionally fouled the Panthers, but his would be completely And again, Cole, we're talk, we talk about like 80%, 70 like they average like 73% as a team, and like... <laughs> They're like 11 for 21 tonight or something like yeah. that. Very uncharacteristically bad. Like, first time to pin the Panthers, it was from the three-point line they struggled. Tonight they struggled they've done, again? The yeah, line they've kinda. made a lot more shots, but like, they've still a, a somewhat too. low possession. But this time around, man, it's been the free throws that have plagued the Golden Beavers. Yeah. This is a team that absolutely can win the D2 State Championship, Cole, but... Maybe not this year, but like you said, a very young team. Kind of reminds me of the Panthers last year. Very young team. I wouldn't be shocked this year, man. Gabby Wilkie in her senior year going to try and will this team. Her, Riley Sarnacki. Oh, Gabby Wilkie is a senior. That's Mackenzie right. Gritzmacher and Salatel, the four seniors for this team, four of their most impactful players. 
course, they are returning Shea Marie Ashley and Natalia Donaldson, both sophomores for this team. Natalia yeah. Donaldson, my prediction, she's a future conference player of the year for this team. Beaver Dam here, you, you need a turnover. Cannot get the Panthers so back to yeah, the line. Yeah, you gotta have a turnover here. They don't have anybody to give it to. Nine has flashes late. That's does make the catch, and Wilkie trying to rip it away, rips the arm of Nine Heist instead, and they call the foul. That's a great catch from Nine Heist. Again, yep. you know, I was watching earlier today some film of the Bucks, especially that shot that Dave made against the, uh, the Kings to win them the game. That possession reminded me of that right there. The center, it was Brooke Lopez who flashed and they didn't have any options on the inbound. Nine Heist flashes open, creates the catch, and this time she gets fouled and will make the first. Pushes the lead back up to six. And again here, with another free throw, can push it up to seven. Again, we see Gritzmacher for Jolka and Bastion for Tracy. These offense and defensive subs that we see late on in games here. Nine highs. A potential to move it back to three scores for the Panthers. Does miss, rebounds loose and controlled by Shea Marie Ashley. Gotta go, gotta shoot a three. She's gotta shoot the ball, and that's poked off a of Schenecker out oh, of bounds. I thought she just let it go for a second. Nah, Schenecker yeah, got a yeah, hand yeah. to it for sure. 12.0 to go, Cole. Still only a two possession game. Let's ride this one out. Let's see what the Golden Beavers 12 draw 12 seconds here. away. You gotta think, Donaldson is not gonna get the ball. There's no reason to put it in her hand. She cannot be the one shooting threes. Wilkie, deep triple, is an air, air ball. ball. That is going to wrap things up. And isn't that just kind of symbolic of this game, Cole? I think the, the Beaver Dam three. Beavers have had more air balls than made threes. Man, Cole, and I mean, I'm gonna put my hand up for the Golden Beavers, man. They, other than some struggling from shooting tonight, this is a team that can challenge for a state championship this year, in the future. Clock down to one, and we have an undefeated season. The Panthers are 24 and 0 for the first time in the around 100 year history of women's basketball at Oregon High School. They are 24 and 0 and riding to the playoffs, Cole. What a ride it's been. So Man. many just blowouts, great moments. <laughs> great, great moments. So many blowouts. This was a close one tonight. This is probably their second closest game that they've had. Tied had, for a second with MG. And we've had so much fun this year, Cole Con, Lady Panther basketball from the start of the year to the end of the year. We've hopped on the train. Now we're the conductors, man. Like, <laughs> roll Lady Panthers. 24 0. On to the playoffs, man. I, Six games away, Cole. I, I had a chance to interview Coach Wamsley before this season. And he said that it was a gauntlet of a schedule, and it was, and the Panthers weathered the storm, weathered the schedule, and just flat out embarrassed teams, 24 big ones. Man, if you guys have any time here in the coming weeks to make it out to a Lady Panther playoff game, be it their first two at home, be it a sectional game over in Wanakee or Janesville Craig, potentially a state game on the March 7th and 8th at the Rush Center in Green Bay. I'll be there if we make it, guys. I'm making the trip to Green Bay. But what a special season for these 2023-24 Oregon Lady Panthers and six more games away, Cole, from the ultimate goal. They made it there four years ago and of course COVID, COVID took it man. away from them. They were the one seed in that state tournament and felt like they had it right at the tip of their fingers and had it taken away from them by COVID. But man, what a season here. And two more games of Lady Panther basketball that we will be calling, of course we have at least two more boys games to call as well. So at the very least, we're calling four more this year, depending if the boys host the game or not. Uh, but again, that's that's it for tonight, guys. Um, we'd again, one more time, like to thank our sponsors who helped make this broadcast possible with their generous support. The Village of Oregon, a great place to live, work, and play. The Oregon School District, actively building competency, character, culture, and community. The Oregon Athletic Booster Club, doing great things for all Panther sports. Your membership dues directly support our student athletes. Consider becoming a booster today. The Oregon Area Cares Community Coalition. Parenting teens is hard. We are here to help. OregonAreaCares.org. By Culver's of Oregon, Stoughton Health, and your local pizza pit. We'd again like to welcome Wisco Industries to our family of sponsors, a proud supporter of Panther sports, celebrating our 75th anniversary in 2024. Taurus Insurance is our scoreboard sponsor again, specializing in personal, business, and life insurance. Locally owned since 1978. Well, guys, one last time here for the regular season for the Lady Panthers. Congratulations to them, 24-0.
What an accomplishment. And for tonight, alongside me has been Ben George and Cole Krieger. I've been Luke Marks. Thank you guys for watching our OCA Media special broadcast. We'll see you tomorrow night on a Friday Night Live edition of OCA Media as the boys take on Beaver Dam, I think. No, not Beaver Dam, actually. Let me get it for you. It's youth night tomorrow night, so any youth looking to come on, they play the DeForest Norskis tomorrow night at 7. Again, our special Friday Night Live broadcast, youth night. All the youth, come on out. And Thank you guys for watching again alongside me, Cole Krieger, Ben George, I've been Luke Marks. Thank you guys, and have a great night, everyone. This exclusive broadcast of Panther Sports is made possible in part with support from our generous sponsors. The Village of Oregon, a great place to live, work, and play. The Oregon School District, actively building competency, character, culture, and community. The Oregon Athletic Booster Club, doing great things for all Panther sports. Your membership dues directly support our student athletes. Consider becoming a booster today. The Oregon Area Cares Community Coalition. Parenting teens is hard. We're here to help. OregonAreaCares.org. Wisco Industries, proud supporter of Panther Sports, celebrating our 75th anniversary in 2024. Culver's of Oregon, welcome to Delicious. Stoughton Health, and by Pizza Pit. Forward. Jakey has some room, a legitimate chance, and he fights the top of the net, Jakey. And an early goal for the Panthers. Oh, Euro snap, what a move, Olivia Nice. First generation Filipino American. You don't always feel you're a part of the country you live in. It's this weird middle space sometimes that you have to, to live inside of. But when you meet others that are also living in that space, you'll learn to know that that it's its own unique space too. This is a presentation of OCA Media Sports. Welcome to this special Friday Night Live broadcast of Panther Basketball on OCA Media, your home for Panther sports. Tonight, the Panthers host the Watertown Goslings in a conference matchup. We'll be right back with the start of tonight's exciting game right after these messages. This exclusive broadcast of Panther Sports is made possible in part with support from our generous sponsors. The Village of Oregon, a great place to live, work, and play. The Oregon School District, actively building competency, character, culture, and community. The Oregon Athletic Booster Club, doing great things for all Panther sports. Your membership dues directly support our student athletes. Consider becoming a booster today. The Oregon Area Cares Community Coalition. Parenting teens is hard. We're here to help. OregonAreaCares.org. Wisco Industries, proud supporter of Panther Sports. Celebrating our 75th anniversary in 2024. Culver's of Oregon, welcome to Delicious. Stoughton Health, and by Pizza Pit.
Want to be a part of something great? The Oregon Athletic Booster Club needs your help. It means providing student athletes with positive experiences to help them succeed on and off the court. Make sure I have the right gear and equipment I need to succeed. Your donation will create a lasting impact in our community. With your donations, you will help me in achieving my goals. We need your support. We are part of something great. Hello and welcome back to another exciting Panther basketball game. It's Friday Night Live here as the boys going to take on the Watertown Goslings. I'm Luke Marks. Alongside me is Cole Krieger, and it's another special broadcast here on OCA Media. We bring in Coach Blanke right away for another exciting pregame interview. Coach, congrats on the win in the JV game. Thank you, thank you. Uh, and for our boys coming off of a loss in Wanakee, kind of... What are you expecting to kind of be different from tonight? We saw Wanakee jump out ahead really, really early. And of course, with five seniors kind of starting things off tonight on senior night, I expect, uh, what are we kind of expecting to see from the Panthers team to try and open the gate up better than they did last time? Well, you know, as, uh, as it is senior night, there's always something a little special in the air. Um, there's a little up more juice, there's a little more energy. Um, so we're excited to see kind of how we start off the senior night with uh, Diaz Crack. Uh, Xander, Noah, and then uh, Grant. Yeah, that's great. And uh, last time uh, the boys played Watertown was really early in the year, obviously. Kind of hadn't got their feet very far under them yet. Uh, do you kind of expect things to go a little bit differently tonight than they did in the first game? Of course, got the win, but it was in overtime, correct? Or it was just in the regulation, but it was really close. Yes, it was a close game um, all the way through for the most part. We had a little lead, and then uh, they kind of started to catch up. Um, but, I mean, I think we're a better team now. And then... Uh, we, Diaz was just coming off injury with his ankle at that point for that game. Yeah, and kind of final thoughts here. Uh, who are you expecting to see from Watertown tonight kind of take over uh, and kind of show themselves tonight? Yeah, well, Brett Schwefel, um is averaging 17 and a half points per game, and um, he's going to shoot it. And then they've got um, Calvin Hergen as well, who shoots it at 38% from three. All right, well, Coach, that is all great to hear. Again, congrats on the JV dub, and uh, let's go get one for varsity. Thank you. All right, guys, and right now is here we bring Cole Krieger in on the action here with just a couple minutes. I believe it is time for our senior night presentation here on OCA Media, and we'd like to recognize our Panther seniors who contributed to this program's success over the recent years. Here are your seniors. Number three, Henry Kreckman. Henry has broken out as a key contributor this season with averages of eight points per game, nine rebounds per game, and four assists per game. Henry has cemented himself as the best rebounder in the conference. Congrats, Henry. Number five, Caden Diaz. Caden has had quite the season for the Panthers, averaging 10 points per game and shooting over 40% from three. Caden has started now two years for the Panthers and has seen many incredible performances, including a career high of 24 points this season. Congrats, Caden. Number 12, Grant Wolank. Grant has worked his way into the starting lineup at the starting power forward position. After a very successful football season, Grant has solidified himself as a key contributor, averaging seven points and seven rebounds per game and being a force on the defensive end. Congrats, Grant. Number 14, Noah Lazowski. One of two Lazowski twins on the roster. Noah has gotten the opportunity to come off the bench for the Panthers this season, bringing positive play and energy to the game. Being a multiple sport athlete, Noah has more to look forward to this spring. Congrats, Noah. Number 15, Caden Dixon. Caden couldn't make it tonight as he is currently on a cruise around the world. Caden has come off the bench this season for the Panthers, providing a spark defensively whenever the Panthers need it. In the spring, Caden is looking forward to track as he has a great opportunity to make it to state as a sprinter. Congrats, Caden. And number 23, Xander Lazowski, the other Lazowski twin on the roster. Following successful football season last fall, Xander has been the hype man for the Panthers this year. He's a lot like his brother, he's a multiple sport athlete, and he has a lot more to look forward to in the spring. Congrats, Xander. 
Thank you to these incredible athletes for their leadership this season. We wish them all the best and the great success in their career, future endeavors. Well, guys, only a minute until game time here. Kind of brought the pregame stuff right down to the wire. Cole, let's get kind of your analysis on tonight's matchup as we head into things here against Watertown. Well, the big story in this one, Luke, is the records. Panthers 12 and 7, 5 and 5 in conference play. It's been quite the opposite for the Goslings. 4 and 14 overall, 0 and 10 in conference play. The Panthers want to stay in kind of that middle ground to maybe try to find them well way towards the top of the conference. This is a game that they cannot take lightly, not look past. They need to take care of business tonight. Yes, they do, Cole. Of course, looking to uh, kind of find themselves hosting the first round, and uh, this is kind of one of those games where you just can't let it get away with you. Panthers, of course, love to make things close, as we know, and tonight they got to do a good job keeping things under control and staying out ahead and getting dubbed. Yeah, only a three-point win over the Goslings in December. And now, here are your starting lineups. First, for the visitors from Watertown. Number one, Brett Schwefel. Number three, Jacob Hurchin. Number five, Calvin Hurchin. Number 14, Reese Kamrath. Number 15, Braden Schmidt. And now for your Oregon Panthers, number three, Henry Crackman. Number five, Caden Diaz. Number 12, Grant Wallach. Number 14, Noah Lissowski. And 23, Xander Lissowski! We are ready to rock here, folks. It is the Panthers and the Goslings from Oregon High School. The studio is chopping. Noah Lazowski, Xander Lazowski, Henry Kreckman, Grant Wallach, and Caden Diaz start things off for the Panthers, and you heard the Goslings lineup as well. 18 minutes on the clock, 0-0. Let's play basketball on OCA Media Sports Friday Night Live. Watertown gets things underway. It's Brett Schweffel. He will start things off for the Goslings. Draws the Henry Kreckman matchup. Dump it off right away. Here's Calvin Ertgen, the other... Great player for these Goslings. Up and off inside, Noah Lazowski tips it off for the steal, and we're off and running here at Oregon High School. Inside, it's Xander Lazowski. Yes! Yes! First points of the season for Xander Lazowski. Xander Lazowski starts the game off with the lay. Great action from the Panthers. Xander Lazowski never stopped moving off the transition. The left-handed lay is no good, and Jacob Hurtgen, big miss. Here come the Panthers, it's Wallach. He kicks the Crackman. Crackman. Working inside, slows down, finds a cutting Diaz who is going to be fouled on the reach in there. Gonna get Jacob Ertgen on the foul. What a start here, Cole. It is bumping in Oregon High School on this Friday night. Great to see Xander getting in the action early. First points of his season and his varsity career, I believe. Crackman makes the catch off the inbounds, finds Noah Lazowski, the other Lazowski brother. Here's Caden Diaz. Works to the free throw line, gets to the block, finishes with the left. Tough make there for number five, Caden Diaz. We saw he's been a great part of this team the second half of the season. Here in the corner, it's going to be number 14, Reese Cameron, the starting quarterback for the Goslings, committed to UW Lacrosse to play ball next fall. Working inside, spinning on Olazowski. The kick, shot three for Cameron. This is too strong and a bad miss, but an offensive board for the Goslings. Right back into things, Calvin Hurtgen off the scramble. To the corner, he finds his brother. Now on the handoff, here is Jacob Hurtgen. Finds his brother, Calvin. His shot three is good. Calvin Hurtgen starting the scoring off for the Goslings with a three. From one brother to another, that's an assist right there. Here's Diaz back into things. Find Wallank, and Wallank lays too high, but a foul. Gonna go against Reese Camrath, the guard for the Goslings, who's worked his way into this starting lineup and has played very solidly for the Goslings this year, facilitating as a guard. Wallank shooting two has been very solid this, from the line this season. Looking here, front end will fall. Wallank.
Blank again. Shot is good, and the Panthers extend the lead back up to three. It is six to three, your score. Good start offensively for the Panthers. Besides that one defensive rebound, overall controlling the pace in this one. That is right, Panthers are doing a great job right now. Here's Calvin Herkin, loses Lazowski, guts inside and can't score, finds his own rebound. Ball still loose, Sandra Lazowski to the floor, it's out of bounds, off of Calvin Herkin. And the Goslings cannot maintain possession, Panther basketball. We're only a minute and 49 seconds in and already so much energy has traveled through this gym. Panther student section is bumping. Here's Diaz on the drive, has a good shot to the basket. Cannot find the bottom. It stayed up there for so long on the rim, but just didn't fall the right way. Here is Camrith. Hands off to Hurtgen. Hurtgen to Hurtgen. Had a Camrith in the corner. Here's Brett Schweffel. Quiet so far. Crackman. Could have had a chance there for a transition dunk. Now he goes to Hurtgen. Jacob Hurtgen back to Schweffel. Schweffel to the corner. Not a shot he likes there. Now here comes Calvin Hurtgen. Hurtgen, the only scorer for the Goslings so far. Long possession here. It's Camrith inside and trouble out of bounds. Will stay with Watertown. But a great defensive start from Oregon, especially on that possession, forcing a 45 second long possession and a tip out of bounds. Caden Diaz getting with those active hands. Here's Calvin Hurtgen, corner three, cash it. Ties it up and he's got six early ones for the Goslings. Noah Lazowski will just cut to the cup and is not gonna find the bottom. It will go off of the Goslings out of bounds. Checking in here for Watertown, number 22, Cameron Kranz and number 12, McAllister Hayes. Mac Hayes, I'll call him. Wall Ank will inbound. They give it to Diaz. Diaz works to the corner. Wanted Wall Ank on the give and go. Instead, it's Xander Lazowski. Head fake on the triple attempt. He'll work right. Good defense played by Schweffel. On the cut, it's Kreckman. Gets a couple hands to it and makes the catch eventually. Here's Noah Lazowski. They swing it to the corner. Caden Diaz, good motion. He'll try a three in. Connects. Caden Diaz delivering from beyond the arc. 41% three point shooter. He's been on fire as of late here, Luke. He's been so good for the Panthers from beyond the arc this season, and he's been great finishing at the rim, too. Here's Schweffel. He finds Hayes. Hayes working on Diaz. Panther student section starts to clap again, getting in the head of the Goslings. On the drive here, great defense. Oh, and they're going to get Xander Lazowski on the foul. Shooting foul across the arm, and Calvin Hurtgen will return to the line. Rather, that's his brother Jacob Hurtgen who will go to the line. Well, Luke, like you said, Panthers doing a pretty good job defensively, forcing a lot of tough shots for the Goslings, except Hurtgen just got a couple good looks so far, and that's the difference in this one. Hurtgen missing on the first. Second shot up there is going to fall, and one for two from the line is Jacob Hurtgen. Here comes Crackman, bringing things up, hands off Diaz. Diaz works to the top of the key, now inside. Wants Wallank, finds him, it goes out of bounds to Watertown. It goes off the chest of Wallank and kind of an awkward spot to fit into. Henry Crackman will go to the bench, earns his first dress on Carvel end of the game now. The sophomore checking in for the first time tonight. For the Goslings there, a shot is no good. Rebound still loose and controlled by Xander Lazowski. Panthers going in transition, it's Lazowski. Cuts to the cup, is fouled on the reach. Nine to seven, your score. Panthers doing a good job of working the ball around in transition so far. Diaz will get it in. Carvala jumps and makes the catch. Lazowski on the cut, creates space. Carvala spins, is fouled on the way up. And will go to the free throw line where he has become very well acquainted with this season. Vaughn Carvala shooting top 20 in the state in free throws this season. Gets to the line at will and has done a great job converting on those attempts this season, but does miss the first there. 
Nolan Erfurth will check in for Caden Diaz. I like how Coach Siebert is leaving some of the end of the bench guys like Noah and Zangler Rosowski get a little more tick than really I thought that they would be getting here. So going to leave them in for as long as uh, they can without jeopardizing anything. Good to see. Love to see you for the Twins. Here's Schweffel. Kicks in the corner, now finds Hurt in. Gosling's do a lot of passing outside the top of the key. At the top right now, it's Kranz. Head fake, drive inside, and Mac Hayes misses the layup. Noah Lasowski with the save. Here comes Xander Lasowski behind the back, finds Wallach to the cup. What a find to Erferth, and the right-handed lay won't go. Rebound is loose, will go to Oregon. No, they call it off of Erferth. Gosling basketball, so much going on. Panthers in transition. Xander and Noah looking to push the tempo. <laughs> The rest of the Panthers aren't ready for it. Schweffel gives right away here to Kranz. Kranz finds Hurtgen. Hurtgen works right on Lazowski. Big gives back to Kranz. Hands up to Schweffel. Schweffel, their leading scorer, has yet to find the bottom of the basket so far. Another longer possession. Schweffel denied great by Carvala. Here's Mac Hayes. Hayes finds Hurtgen. Now the drive and the shot. Jacob Hurtgen cannot find the bottom of the basket. Noah Lazowski pushes the tempo to his brother, who scores! Four points for Xander Lazowski. You love to see it, Luke. Xander Lazowski cooking so far in this one. Nobody picked him up in transition. He was wide open for the score. Nice find by his brother Noah to award him on the cut, the kick. Head fake by Schweffel, works through Carvala, kicks to the corner, Kranz's three is no good. Good job closing out by Grant Wolang. Oh, Xander Lozowski throws the baseball pass there. Fine. Here is Xander Lozowski, shot three, is good! Xander Lozowski makes the three, oh my goodness. What are we seeing? He told all of us over the summer he was a 60% three-point shooter and we didn't believe him, Lou. What am I watching He may have not right been now. lying. <laughs> You love to see it. We're bumping Hurtgen. Makes it in the foul. Man, dude, the energy in here is nuts. Oh my. You guys, there is still time. Come on down to Oregon High School. It's senior night. Let's get it going as we see Xander Lazowski to the bench. The ovation. Standing ovation for Xander Lazowski. Seven points in six minutes. Let's go, Xander. Heck yeah. Love it. And the shot is good for Jacob Hurtgen. He'll earn a rest in the place. Brady Shower into the game. Going back to that Xander three, it looked good right away, I all the way from down, up man. here. Wow. Silky smooth with the release. <laughs> I just can't believe it. Here's Noah Lazowski. Kicks to the corner for Erfurt. Erfurt back to Lazowski, to the corner. Erfurt, not the three point shooter for this team. It's Diaz. Watertown into his zone. Carvala. Spots up in the corner, in some trouble, throws it across for Diaz, who cannot make the catch, out of bounds. Here's Schweffel. Carvalho will pick him up right away at the top of the key. Kicks to the corner on some motion. Here's Herkin, ooh. Almost stepped out of bounds. Shower dumps it off inside, working through. Contact blocked away. That was Braden Schmidt who got stuffed by Henry Kreckman. Jacob Hurtgen will take the place of his brother, Calvin Hurtgen. Noah Lazowski now will check out of the game and a great start for him as well. A couple assists to his name and a Great performance from both Lazowski brothers on senior night. Grant Wallach, a great scramble. Carvala in transition. They lob it ahead, he makes the catch at the block. Spins right hand, you know it's good. Vaughn Carvala, just money from the either block on those turnarounds. You know who's going down. 17-10, the Panthers lead. Stumbling is Herkin. Finds Shower, cuts the baseline. Right, fake, here's Schweffel. Panthers scrambling and Brett Schweffel Make some pay on the mid-range. 
Gosling's now in a trap, a zone trap here. Erferth makes the catch at the right side there in the offensive end for the Panthers. Here's Carvel, a corner, spot up, triple, book. Mm. Look good from up here, Luke, I agree with you. great. That will go out of bounds off of Oregon. Back into the game, Calvin Hurtgen. Just a quick couple seconds rest for him. Brett Schreffel out of the game. Here comes Jacob Hurtgen. Clock now down below 10 minutes into the corner. Here is Hurtgen with it. Jab step, working on Erfurth, loses his dribble. Calvin Hurtgen inside, kicks out. Here's Jacob Hurtgen in the corner. Brady Shower, Shower spins on wall and goes baseline. No passes there, it just gets thrown away. Carvalho ahead, in transition, is gonna be picked. We love seeing Vaughn Carvalho leaking out in transition, because we usually know what's gonna happen. That time was picked, oh, he skied to try and block it off the glass, but count the bucket there. Jacob Hurtgen, I believe. Here's Wallank, finds Kreckman. Watertown works back within three. Diaz wide open, just Watertown lost him in the corner. Diaz could not make good on the corner three there. In transition, Jacob Hurtgen hands off, driving. Here is Camrith. He finds Shower at the right block. Not a lot of, there it is, Panthers with the steal. Not a lot again for Brady Shower to find many goslings on the pass. Diaz in transition, here comes traffic. Gonna catch up and Panthers gonna get into the half court here. Lob it to Diaz at the baseline. Just gonna get a wide open left hand and easy as you like right there. Yeah, making it look easy for sure. Again, Caden Diaz just finding those spots in the zone where he can get open and he is making Watertown pay. Calvin Hurkin kicks the shower who sends it over to Camrith. Here's Jacob Hurkin working on Carvalho. Kicks to Camrith who stepped out in the corner. Finds Calvin Hurkin, he's already made two threes tonight. Steps back for another one. This time no good off front iron. Kreckman battling for the rebound. Diaz comes up with it. Panthers again, great scramble for the ball. Here's Wallank, runs to the corner, hands off to Carvalho. Vaughn looking to create now. Panthers draw a set. Diaz flashes, now will collect top of the key. Kicks to the corner, here's Erford. Carvalho shows, top of the key, no good off back iron. And Carvalho 0 for 2, timeout Watertown. Here with 8.04 to play in the first half, it is 19-14. What a start at Oregon High School. Yeah, Xander Lazowski leading the Panthers with seven points. I never thought I'd be saying that, but hey, he did, he did, oh my, what am I trying to say? He just, he's, <laughs> so I, I lost her words right now. Was, Xander Lazowski stud, so, seven so points. So great to see, that's what I was trying to say. A couple of layups in transition and a three in transition, man. Never in my life would I have thought the word Xander Lazowski three would be in a sentence on OCA Media, but here we are with seven Xander Lazowski points. He's working with what they gave them. Yeah, and he's making every second he played count. You just love to see it, Luke. Ryan Dins into the game. Bringing it up is Schweffel. He dumps off to Herkin. He finds Cameron. Dump it off inside. Working on Walling. Spinning is Schmidt. Kicks outside. Schweffel. Jump stops to the right elbow. Now kicks back to Jacob Herkin. Herkin to his brother in the corner. Here's Calvin Herkin, who is going to have the ball slapped out of his hands out of bounds by Nolan Erford. Watertown not able to get a ton going. Still within five. Schweffel will start things off for the Goslings. Shot three in the corner. Hurt again. Misses. Diaz the rebound. He is yeah, I was already up say. to four or five rebounds. Caden Diaz on the glass tonight. It's Carvel inside the right hand. Tough finish. Good find by Diaz. Great overall possession by him. Grabs the defensive board and back to the basket. Yeah. Wrong hand, wrong side. Doesn't matter. Von Carvel on the score. See Henry Kreckman headed to the locker room holding his lower back. Looking to potentially gonna go get checked out by Lisa Folks, our athletic trainer here at Oregon High School. It will be interesting to see the development there as Kreckman feeling some discomfort in his lower back. Shot three for Schweffel, no good. And the rebound still loose. Still loose and now controlled by Hurtgen. Calvin Hurtgen to Jacob Hurtgen, no good in the three. Rebound is loose again, still loose. Now Carvala comes up with it. Ooh, and a collision there as Camerith and Carvala got tied up. 
They call a foul on Camrith. Nick Jacob will come in here for Oregon, takes the place of Erfer. Reese Camrith out of the game for the Goslings. In his place there's Mac Hayes. Here's Dins, finds Carvalho as it poked away out of bounds by Schweffel. Carvalho will lob it over to the top wall, Link makes the catch, and here's Diaz, corner, shot three, is no good, looked good again. Mac Hayes comes up with the rebound. Here he comes for the Gosling, speeding down the court. Watertown gets into the half court, handoff Calvin Hurtgen to his brother Jacob Hurtgen, popping out, shot three, spinning. Mac Hayes inside, right-handed, left-handed finish is no good. Put back will find the bottom. Panthers Schmidt. struggling a little bit on the defensive boards here early. A lot of second and third opportunities for the Gosling so far. Nick Jacob gets wide open in the corner and misses the triple. Din scrambles but cannot come up with the ball. Mac Hayes down the floor again for the Goslings. Nick Jacob will pick him up at the right wing, driving and finishing there. Calvin Hurtgen over Grant Wallen. Wallen ahead to Carvala. Carvala makes the catch, stays in bounds in the corner. He'll find Caden Diaz. Diaz draws the Hurtgen matchup. Into the corner, Ryan Din spot up three, no good. And again, the Panthers lid in the basket the last couple of possessions. Mac Hayes again. Working on Nick Jacob. Finds Calvin Hurt, can swing it to Brett Schweffel at the left wing. Schweffel calls a set out. Carvalho will defend him. Jacob Hurtgen left hand, countered the foul. Watertown looks to tie things up here at the line. Panthers can't buy a bucket. Watertown's getting everything to drop right now. Yeah, no, I was gonna say, Lou, Panthers have had a lot of good looks from three, just haven't made a lot of them. Diaz has one, and funny enough, Xander Lazowski has the other one. A lot of good looks, just not Missing finding nine. there, but again, another second chance. Mac Hayes walks into a three and connects. And what did we just say? A lot of second opportunities for the Goslings. Noah Lazowski will go check back in. Love to see it. Wallen finds Jacob, corner three. Again, short, uncharacteristic from Nick Jacob. A bad miss there. Schweffel. Again, sets up on Carvala. Gets a screen from Schmidt, gets to the elbow. Carvala pokes it out of bounds. They wanted Schmidt on the cut. Noah Lazowski will check in here for Ryan Dins. Quick shift for the Panther wing. Schweffel will inbound here. Gets it into Mac Hayes at the right corner. Hayes works left, finds Calvin Hurtgen. Hurtgen will dump it off below to Schmidt. Now back to the top of the key for Schweffel. Schweffel inside, at the block, spins, kicks to Mac Hayes. Hayes to Calvin Hurtgen, spots up on Lazowski. Doesn't get a much of a shot. Here's Jacob Hurtgen, now back to Calvin Hurtgen. Two-man game as Calvin Hurtgen works inside, is fouled on the floor. Watertown taking their time on these possessions, trying to find the best quality shot. It's honestly, it's been working. They find themselves in the lead here, trying to get their first conference win of the season. Mac Hayes, thudder steps, now finds Schweffel. Schweffel gonna get a screen from Schmidt again, this time Carvalho goes over, now double screen. Corner shot is no good, Schweffel, Wallink all over him. Carvalho skies, runs in transition, gonna cut to the cup, is fouled and just misses the layup. Had a couple defenders haul over him. Here we see Cameron Kranz back, gonna check in again. Carvala shooting the first here. Does connect. Out of the game, Braden Schmidt. Carvalho, his second, will fall as well. Bringing it up here is Schweffel. And an offensive foul. They call it on Mac Hayes. Bumps Carvalho off his position. 
Mason Hoffer gonna check in here for Grant Wallank. Here comes Diaz, finds Hoffer. Hoffer, back to Diaz, now finds Lazowski. Back to Diaz and Lazowski. They're playing some catch up there at the top of the key. Diaz travels. Took a long time to get that crossover down and stepped a couple times before he did. Nick Jacob will check out here. Grant Wallank a very quick rest. Schweffel now for Watertown. Starts things off. Again, Carvela picks him up top of the key. Flashing open is Calvin Erkin. Dropping it off, Mac Hayes finds Schweffel. Schweffel shown no bit of fear to shoot the basketball. Jacob Hurtgen now, top of the key, works on Hopper. Finds his brother, Calvin Hurtgen. That'll be a two if it goes, does not. Skying for the rebound is Carvela. He finds Wallank. Wallank's three is God. Looks so, so many close good. threes. Hoffer, turnaround from the mid range, high off the glass, no good. Finds his own rebound again. Again to Wallach, to the corner, Noah Lazowski. Lazowski, not his spot there in the corner, definitely. <laughs> Hoffer had a good look, works inside, finds Wallach. Good and a find great, by Mason Hoffer. Great give there from Hoffer. The veteran move, passed up the shot attempt for another assist. Here in the corner, Calvin Hurtgen. Hurtgen finds Schweffel. Schweffel, top of the key. Dumps it off to the corner. Now it's Kren spinning and loses Wallach to the corner. Mac Hayes in some trouble, finds Schweffel. Schweffel top of the key, looks to get it going for Watertown. Driving inside, he finishes. Man, that is tough a finish. very tough finish. And a costly turnover. What are the Panthers doing? But Mac Hayes in some trouble. The ball's loose. Noah Lazowski comes up with it. Man, Panthers have to get back to what they do. Here in the corner, Diaz does miss. Noah Lazowski offensive board. Finds Carvala, who walks into a three, and again misses Panthers. Are have missed probably 10 straight threes. Two for like 15 from three right now. It is a rough showing right now for Oregon from beyond the arc. Game is tied at 25. 150 still remaining in the first half. Schweffel gonna bring things over at the logo. Looking to stall here for Watertown. Now they're gonna set. Calvin Hurtgen pressured by Noah Lazowski. They find Mac Hayes. Here is Schweffel, works on Carvalho. Ooh, he could have traveled there instead. Here is Hurtgen again. Hurtgen, spinning, finds Hayes. Hayes is three, he's gonna be off there again. A bad miss for Mac Hayes. Hoffer will run here, trying to catch Watertown off guard. It's Wallach at the right wing, finds Noah Lazowski in the corner. Lazowski dribbles back up top, finds Diaz, who is gonna be fouled by Mac Hayes. Fouls on the floor, but Panthers in the bonus will shoot one and one. Watertown's seventh team foul, rather team's eighth foul. Score is 20-25. I know we're having some technical difficulties with our scoreboard, looking to get those sorted out as quick as possible. Diaz does connect on the first, making it 26-25, Panthers. Earthworth will check in here, but they're looking to bring him in after the free throw. Diaz does miss the second. Again, leaving points out there, right there. Carvalho has missed the free throw, now so is Diaz. One minute remaining in the first half of play. Here's Jacob Hurtgen, gives to his brother Calvin. Watertown doing some show action, top of the key. Here is Schweffel. Again, looking to kind of stall things out here, trying to hold for the last shot, final minute of the half, looking to control how this half ends. Panther student section, letting the Goslings know how they feel about this possession. Jacob Herkin works inside, is not gonna finish, but is gonna go to the line for two. Waterton can grab the lead back here on these two free throws, or tie. Erfurth does go sit back down, so this will be the five to end the half. Jacob Hurtgen's first is gonna miss wide right. <laughs> 
Panthers will almost surely hold for the last shot here. You gotta think either Diaz or Carvalho. They'll draw some sort of action up here. To the corner, it's Hoffer. Clock down below 10. Diaz, water time in his zone. Hoffer, head fake to the baseline. Clock down to three. Lozowski will have to get this up. Hoffer instead shoots the three in. Hey! Finishes the half. Panthers count the basket. It's 29-26 as we go to break. Be back in about six or seven minutes time for your second half here in OCA Media's presentation of Friday Night Live. This is a presentation of OCA Media Sports. This exclusive broadcast of Panther Sports is made possible in part with support from our generous sponsors. The Village of Oregon, a great place to live, work, and play. The Oregon School District, actively building competency, character, culture, and community. The Oregon Athletic Booster Club, doing great things for all Panther sports. Your membership dues directly support our student athletes. Consider becoming a booster today. The Oregon Area Cares Community Coalition. Parenting teens is hard. We're here to help. OregonAreaCares.org. Wisco Industries, proud supporter of Panther sports. Celebrating our 75th anniversary in 2024. Culver's of Oregon, welcome to delicious. Stoughton Health, and by Pizza Pit. We are a part of something great. Wanna be a part of something great? The Oregon Athletic Booster Club needs your help. It means providing student athletes with positive experiences to help them succeed on and off the court. Make sure I have the right gear and equipment I need to succeed. Your donation will create a lasting impact in our community. With your donations, you will help me in achieving my goals. We need your support. We are part of something great. are watching Panther Basketball on OCA Media Sports, your home for Panther Sports. Please subscribe to our YouTube page and get notified every time we stream another exciting Panther Sports home game. Gracias. Thank you. What's wrong, mijo? Donating to a pet's medical care can keep families together. Pets and people belong together. Learn more at petsandpeopletogether.org. I don't know why you're so sad. You've got a roof over your head. Bro, you gotta stop with that depression stuff. That's a white people thing. Escúchame, en esta casa, los hombres no lloran. You all right? It just feels like it's coming from everywhere. 
you want to talk about it? Thanks for hearing me out, bro. Appreciate it. You can talk to me if you're feeling sad. Whenever you need to talk, I'm here, okay? Forward. Jakey has some room. A legitimate chance that he finds the top of the net, Jakey. And an early goal for the Panthers. Oh, Euro snap. What a move, Olivia Nice. We welcome you back in here to the second half at Oregon High School. Your Panthers are out ahead of the Watertown Goslings, 29 to 26, as we're almost ready to take you back from break. Cole, let's uh, get your thoughts on the first half of action. Well, you love to see Xander Lazowski leading the Panthers in points at halftime. You better believe you love to see it. Love to see that. Mason Hoffer, huge three to break the tie as time expires at the buzzer. And overall, the Panthers are outplaying the Goslings. Just need to get a little better on the defensive boards. And they seem to knock down their threes. I mean, like we said, they've only made three three-pointers, and they've had a lot of open looks, just not finding nylon so far. That's right, Cole. They're like two for 13 from three, and it's just been really, or three for 13 now with the Hoffer three, but they've really struggled from beyond the arc. Of course, Mason Hoffer, somebody who we don't see really, he, he can shoot the three, but we don't see him do it very often. And then Xander Lazowski with one of the threes, and then Caden Diaz with the other, correct? And, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, and again, Caden's kind of the player you'd expect out of all of them to be the one in position to make those shots. But uh, yeah, the Panthers have uncharacteristically had a rather rough performance from the line in the first, uh, from the three-point three line. They also really struggled, I think, from the line, or from the three-point three line in... Uh, Wana Key, uh, especially Ryan Dins, who just really, really, really struggled. Yeah, he has a missed three, and Nick Jacob has a couple missed threes of his own. Yeah, they, I, I think if, if they just need they just need to knock that, start knocking down their shots. Excuse me. Yeah, absolutely. I think they knock down their shots. They can kind of kind of find a groove and get back into things. But uh, now that they're out ahead, they really need to continue to extend the lead and kind of run away with things. And that's something you really like to see. Yeah, I expect to see a, a different story here in the second half for sure. Yeah, hopefully we'd like to see a lot better performance. So, same starting five. Actually, not the same starting five. Uh, so, Henry Kreckman undressed as we start the second half. Very interesting. Here's Grant Wale. Wale finds Diaz in the corner for Carmelo. Yeah, so... It, Appears Henry Kreckman's night is finished uh, with some lower back issues as Carvalho delivers from the lane. That could be huge for the Goslings, the best rebounder in the conference. I mean, yeah, we saw the in the first half the Panthers really, really struggled defense to defensive rebound, and obviously, kind of the thing there is Henry Kreckman. A lob and the finish from Schwefel. There is a grown adult leading a student section over on the Watertown <laughs> side. Bro thinks he's on the team. I have never seen anything like this before. Yeah, very interesting. We're going to have a duty war here in half two. I'm willing to bet. Diaz finishes in the lane. He is throwing his hat up in the air after Watertown scores. I have never seen anything like this. 
He's ready to lead the Watertown Studi. Here is Schwefel bringing things up for the Goslings. Dumps it off right away to Jacob Hurtgen. Here's Cameron working on Xander Lozowski. Lozowski walls up. They give it back outside to Hurtgen. Head fake. Schwefel inside. Does not finish. Spills to the glass. Now Carmela back in transition. Finds Wallank. Wallank head fake. Dumps to Diaz at the block. Diaz now works back outside. Brings it all the way to the wing and finds Wallank top of the key. Wallank looking to facilitate. Diaz. Head fake, again goes baseline, now finds Noel Lazowski, will try a three of his own. Oh my! Look looked good, good from it up looked here. Good. It looked good, absolutely. Wouldn't that have been something, both Lazowski brothers make a three. And Noel Lazowski there putting pressure on Calvin Erkin. Pushes him out of bounds, they call the foul. Man, this is so interesting. To see that guy over there leading the yeah. Watertown student Vice, section. Vice Principal Brad Ashworth kicked him out of the Watertown student section, or at least the located Watertown in the parent gym. Section, yeah, parent right section, there. excuse me. And he moved over behind the bench. Shot three is good for Schweffel. Watertown back within two. He's leading a group of middle schoolers. Those all look like middle schoolers are underclassmen. Unless, too. There's some the of the, unless it's the JV team. Yeah, it might be. It might be the JV team. Here's Wallank inside, can't connect, too strong on the right hand. Back in transition, here's Camrith. Slows down, dumps off to Jacob Herkin. Working inside, here's Schmidt. Wallank gets a hand of the basketball, they force to the corner. Schweffel's three is in and out. Wallank still loose on the rebound, it'll go to Oregon, but again, Panthers just, something they're missing with Henry Kreckman, and he just does a great job with those long arms able to get the ball, his hands to the ball and get full possession of it. Yeah. The Panthers have not had issues getting to the ball. They've had issues getting full sole possession of the basketball. It's been loose every single time mm. for multiple players to scramble. Yeah, and they've given Watertown water a lot of second and third opportunities. You know, I think that is just a group of middle schoolers from Watertown. Carvalho's three is no good. Ball on the floor and grabs the rebound there. That's gonna be Hurtgen on the drive. Camrith blocked by Diaz. Ball's loose and still controlled, although goes to the backcourt. Carvalho hustling for it with Schweffel. Yeah, I was gonna say, that's definitely over and back. No Panther on the tip. Carvalho will do the inbound here. Xander Lazowski out, by the way, to the bench. Nolan Erfurth into the game for him. Here is Erfurth, will come and make the catch in the backcourt. Carvalho threw a baseball pass all the way back there. Here's Diaz running the baseline. Finds Noah Lazowski on the cut, he spins. Great give to Diaz who finishes with the left. Noah Lazowski's had a lot of assists tonight. I wouldn't be surprised to see him Stay in here down the stretch, especially yeah. with Henry Kirkman out of the game. He's played great. He's been playing really good. And also, Xander solid Lozowski, on defense who too. is, I believe, now second in scoring. Caden definitely has the lead in scoring tonight. Here's Hurtgen. His three is too strong. Grant Wallank skies for the rebound. But yeah, with Kreckman out, Noah Lazowski could play a role here down the stretch for sure. Here's Diaz at the free throw line, makes the catch, finds Erfurth, who runs the baseline, elevates, makes his own offensive rebound off the miss. Finds Carvalho, here goes Wallank, Wallank head fake. Dumps it off to Noah Lazowski, another corner kick, Diaz three is good, and Noah Lazowski, That's his fourth or fifth assist. assist, yeah. Diming up the Panthers is Noah Lazowski. Panthers up by seven now. Here's Calvin Hurtgen, gives to his brother Jacob. Jacob looks to force that one inside, but Schmidt not able to get too much room on Wallank. Head fake, Calvin Hurtgen is stripped by Noah Lazowski. Lazowski runs in transition, one Good dribble, Wallank, that's Way another assist. Patient. That's six Noah Lazowski assists, he is fired up, and the Panthers lead by nine. Man, Noah Lazowski, talk about impressive tonight. Both Lazowskis are showing out on senior night, and if Kreckman has to miss a extended period of time, Noah Lazowski may find himself playing valuable minutes for these Panthers as they head down the stretch in the last four or five games before playoffs. 
Yeah, I remember near the start of the year, Noah got a little bit of got a little bit of playing time. It wasn't much, but it was a little more than kinda we kind of expected. Flexed out of the rotation yeah. as Caden returned to play, but we see him here kind of working back into things and proving why he never should have been taken out of that position. And here he is showing out as he comes back out onto the floor, rather actually does take a seat. Now Nick Jacob will come in for him. No, he is still on the floor. They take Caden Diaz out of the game instead. Yeah, number 14, Noah Zowski, really scrappy on defense tonight as well. Like we said, about five or six dimes yeah, so far. Yeah, I believe six assists to his yeah. name. Climbing up his brother in a couple of them. Here's Mac Hayes, kicks it, drive, and the lay is good there as Jacob Hurtkin finishes over Noah Lazowski. Here is Noah Lazowski bringing things up for the Panthers. Gives to Erfurth right away, back to Lazowski. Wallang sets a screen. Lazowski kicks to Nick Jacob, they dump it off inside. Carvala spins and finishes high off the glass. Panther student section going at the Watertown middle schoolers. <laughs> you see a lot here at Oregon High School. Well, if that's they're going to sure. get led by that guy over there, you might as well go at him. Hayes kick, Schweffel three, no good. Wallank grabs the board. Wallank here, top of the key, finds Jacob, spots up for three, in connects. Can't leave that man with a lot of space. Nick Jacob's going to make you pay for that. Hand down, hand down, you know. Yes, there, almost an errant pass. Erfurth tips it out of bounds. Does a great job of that. Ryan Dins will check into the game here for Nolan Erfurth. Rather for Von Carvala, who will take another probably 30 seconds of rest and then come right back. And nope, Noah Lazowski instead will take a seat here. What a shift for Noah Lazowski. We'll see if he makes his way back into this one here. A great first six minute shift for him. Jacob tips that one out of bounds. Here is going to be Calvin Hurt getting to inbound it. Zach Palace will come into the game here. We haven't seen a lot of him lately either. Uh, another opportunity for a Panther to kind of potentially earn some rotational minutes here as we kind of get down to the grit grind part of the season. The Panthers have kind of gone to an eight or nine man rotation. And here tonight we've seen all but four. So 12, I believe that is. Yeah, six off the bench. There is a. Finished from Calvin Hurtgen. Ryan Dins will look to run right away. Wallank kind of left behind. Jacob, another three. This time no good. Erfurth battling for the rebound. It'll stay with Oregon. Carvalho will come back in. Brady Shower in there for Brett Schweffel. Carvalho in for Grant Wallack. Carvalho does the inbounds, lobs it up top for Erfurth. He makes the catch, comes down with it, will set things up for Oregon. He'll dribble left first, runs into Nick Jacob, hands off to Carvalho. Carvalho dribbles through traffic, loses it, but is fouled on the reach. Palace will inbound. He'll have Carvalho run over, make the catch at the logo. Carvalho sizes up his defender. Now finds Palace who kicks to Jacob. Jacob has the pressure of Mac Hayes on him now. And Mac Hayes pokes it out of bounds. Jacob, last touched by Oregon. Schweffel back in for Jacob Hurt. Get another quick rest for him. Here is Schweffel. Raffle, just a junior for this team, still has one more year to play with the Goslings. He cuts to the cup, cannot finish, but will earn two shots for his efforts. Schweffel's first is good. Here 
is second now. Will miss. Offensive board and a putback shower misses. Erfer does collect the rebound. And a costly miss there. Dins works, kicks to Jacob. Corner three, book it. Jacob connects, now improves to two for five from three tonight. Panthers, like we said, starting to make their shots and look at that, that lead grow, Luke, up to 12. That's right, here's Calvin Hurtgen, hands off to Schweffel. Panthers, as you said, Cole, up 48 to 36, spinning as Schweffel has it blocked by Carvala. He gets hit there on the rebound by Brady Schauer. Bring it up here, stutter steps, Schweffel. Kicks the Palace in the corner, has Schauer on him, dumps it off to Erfer. Erfer finds Carvala, who slams it home on the reverse. Talk to him nice, Vaughn, there we go. Over top of Brett Schweffel. In the corner, it's Krenz. Krenz forces it down low to Schauer, in some trouble, it's Schauer working on Palace. High hand, Palace, good defense and a rebound for Zach Palace. Making Brady Shower work there, could not get the basket. Panthers up 14 now, looking to extend the lead even further. Carvala, stutter step, double stutter, spins, and gets it picked by Hayes. Hayes got to be careful, he's going to get pinned. And oh absolutely, my goodness. You better believe it. That is absolutely going to happen. Mac Hayes is five foot seven. Vaughn Carvala is going to. Wow. Luke, I don't know about you, but I saw that coming yeah. right away as the ball was taken away. <laughs> Jump stop was probably the better decision there for Mac Hayes, but he did not, and uh, that was a hefty swat. The saw it in the replay, oh my. Nick Jacob, Nolan Erfer, check out. Hoffer and Wallank in. For the Gosling, Schweffel out of the game, Camerith in for it. Also back in is Jacob Hurtgen for his brother Calvin. Here is Jacob Hurtgen. Catches the inbounds, finds Mac Hayes off the dribble. Hayes kicks, shot three. Is gonna hang up there, no good. Ball still loose and controlled. Off the camera, miss. Comes Carvala, Panthers again up 14. Carvala stutter steps, goes inside, is fouled on the floor there by Jacob Hurtgen. Noah Lazowski back into the game, Caden Diaz as well. Ryan Dins, Von Carvalho will take a seat. Schweffel back in, timeout Goslings here. Great start for the Panthers in the second half. Just what you wanted to see about halfway into half number two, the Panthers have extended the lead from three to 14. Really couldn't have asked for much of a better start. Yeah, no, I agree. And they've also been de playing well on the defensive end, Dean up on the Gosling, especially in the paint. A couple blocks, a couple steals down low, and that is why their lead is what it is at 14. Absolutely. They've done a great job. 9.21 to go. Again, the lead for the Panthers is 14 right now. Man, still couldn't get out of my mind that Von Carvalho block over Mac Hayes, man. That is... <laughs> Yeah, that was something. Hayes. As soon, oh, and the uh, Watertown student section is moving. Here we go. Led by the man in the Alabama sweatshirt. Ever so closer to the Panthers. They're egging him on over here. I don't know if this is a smart move from the Goslings. But they're going to get nice and close to the... Luke, we've seen a lot of weird characters over the last we have. few it's weeks or so. It's been an odd season. Weird couple weeks at Oregon High School. Grown man leading a student section full of freshmen or middle schoolers. <laughs> Could never imagine what you see. Wallanks, high arcing three is too strong. Hoffer grabs the Hoffer. rebound again. Mason Hoffer's been great in the offensive glass all year long. Here's Noah Lazowski, dribbles right. Has his pocket pick, gets it back, and is fouled by Reese Camrith. Watertown's third. So weird. The entire studio's in one line, too. <laughs> this, Taking up the entire youth uh, baseline bleacher. This is one of the weirdest things I've okay, ever seen. It's okay, though. Our youth are stepping up, too. They were Tomahawk, Chalk, and Watertown. <laughs> Love to see it out of, like, 
the RCI kids over there. It's Diaz, Watertown getting into his zone. Here's Hoffer for the Panthers. Panthers haven't penetrated yet, now they do. Hoffer gets a look at the three, finds Noah Lazowski. Lazowski kicks back to Diaz, Diaz finds Palace. Here's Lazowski, another three. Misses again, again, another. Another good luck. Yeah, again, another good shot, look good from here. Here's Schweffel, works on Lazowski, kicks to the corner, now Kamrath. Kamrath back to the right, here's Mac Hayes. Hand off to Schweffel, Noah Lazowski on Brett Schweffel. Schweffel, step back, triple, can Good connect. D by Lazowski, staying with him. That's a, in my opinion, a really bad take by Schweffel there. There was no need at the time. Here's Diaz, corner three, cannot connect. Rebound there for Schmidt, but Wallank ties him up and they call a reach on Grant Wallank. Mr. Brad Ashmore talking to the Watertown student section. And they're, uh, they're off, and they, off and away they again. Sending them back over to where they came from <laughs> in the Panther student section. Waving goodbye as well as the middle schoolers for Oregon over there on the sideline. Love to see it. Man, what a weird, weird character. <laughs> what a random, random occurrence here at Oregon High School. Never seen Mac anything Hayes like it. Dumps it off inside to Schmidt. Back to Hayes. What the heck? Hayes, like, didn't get his feet set. Was like a 24-foot floater almost, and it was good. Noah Lazowski works, finds Walling on the cut, who finishes and it! One. One. Noah Lazowski, seventh assist of the night, converts on a Grant Wallank, finishing the foul. Xander Lazowski will check back in here. Panther lead is 13 for Watertown. Both Hurtgen brothers back into the game. Takes the place there, number 22, Cameron Kranz, and number 15, Braden Schmidt. Wallank on the free throw here. Connects, he's three for three from the line tonight. Panther eighth graders over here, down here in the parent section, also making fun of the Watertown fans over there. Mac Hayes finds Kamrath, who works inside, has it poked away, and the foul on Xander Lazowski. This might be a first from Oregon High School. Three different student sections. What do you know? Poked out of bounds, another foul, this time on Hoffer. I don't know, man. Hoffer got the uh, hand of the ball first. Absolutely got the hand of the ball first. Yeah, that, I don't agree with that foul. Timeout, either. Panthers. Up 14. 30 second timeout. Just going to get a quick, quick breather for the boys. Panthers and Goslings. Doing battle right now on OCA Media. Again, this is a special Friday Night Live presentation. Again, I'm Luke Marks alongside me is Cole Krieger. We got our great four person camera crew over here at OCA Media. You're seeing shots from Jordan Hake down there on the baseline cam. We got Will Mayo over there on the right side. We got Ben George right next to me and Miles Tallinn over there on the left side. Of course, our producer Josiah Wampler over there in the booth and our director Paul Zwicker right here next to me calling the shots as he always does. Jacob Hurtgen will inbound for the Gosling. Sandra Lazowski jumping for joy. He gives it into his brother Calvin Hurtgen. Here's Hayes. Another three. This time no good. Hoffer the rebound. Mason Hoffer third or fourth board of the night. A little undersized. Doing a good job. Hoffer loses Hayes. He's able to recover though. Noah Lazowski got pressure on him. Good pressure from Kamrath. How now Hoffer loses his footing, but gets to the basket and finishes. And a lot of players to the floor on that possession. There must be something over there on the right side because Hayes went to the ground and then Hoffer slipped right where Hayes did. The finish at the rim right there for Calvin Hurtgen. Watertown will come and pressure the ball here as, man, they're literally letting Kamrath get into Noah Lazowski. Yeah. Hoffer just going to run past everyone. Finds Daniel Lazowski inside. Wallank can't finish. Had a good look. Just left it a little short. Kind of got pushed off his spot from Kamrath again, who they're letting get a lot of body in this one. Another miss there from Schweffel. Not really even close. Noah Lazowski from Xander Lazowski. 
finishes with the right, or with the left, rather. Every senior now has scored tonight for Call the Oregon Panthers. From Xander Lazowski to Noah Lazowski. Both Lazowski twins have a night. That's a two there, but it won't go, and Wallink and Camerath fighting there. I think they're gonna call Camerath for the foul. Grant Wallink. No, they do, yeah, they're gonna call Camerath on it, I believe. No, they do call Wallink for the foul. Grant Wallink sacked Camerath a couple times in September <laughs> in our football game against him. These two are familiar with yeah. each other. Sacked him again there. Xander Lazowski, Nolan Erfurth out of the game. Carvalho and Diaz in. For Watertown, here comes Braden Schmidt, takes Mac Hayes' place. Hayes has played a great shit, a great night for Watertown, other than getting packed by Von Carvalho earlier. It's Schweffel inside, great deny from Carvalho and Wallink again. Anytime Watertown gets inside, there's a couple bodies to meet whatever Gosling's in there. Here we go again. Again, spinning. Hey, Schmidt, had nothing there. Shot three is good though. Connecting is Schweffel. Cuts the lead down to 13. Oh, and I believe the uh, Watertown adult has vacated yeah, the gym. Yeah, he just left. Oh, I think he's, he's actually being talked to in the field house. I can kind of see him over there. Carvalho was stripped. Transition for Watertown here. Oh, and a miss. Hoffer somehow, oh, they are gonna call him out of bounds. Yeah. Really wasn't much Wallank could do. Not a, it's a very awkward position to be in right there. I don't know who he's talking to. I don't see anybody down there talking to him, but he's talking to somebody. Wide open there right away, and a miss from Jacob Hurchin. Carvalho makes the catch, gives it ahead to Hoffer. Hoffer inside of Lazowski. Back out to Hoffer now. They drop it off inside, and Lazowski wanted a cut baseline, had a opening. Wallank was not expecting it to it out of bounds. Miscommunication there. Mac Hayes back into the game. 5.08 to go, 57-44 your score. Reese Camerath will take a seat timeout. Coach Siebert, it's gonna be a full timeout this time for the Panthers. <laughs> Student section starting the We Want Xander chant. Well, how, what, a, what a night for the Lozowski brothers. Xander, seven points, a couple rebounds, I think an assist. Noah, two points and seven assists of his own. It is just so good to see. It really is, man. These two have worked so hard their entire lives and finally getting a chance to kind of show off their basketball skill. They've been kind of tucked away in the end of the bench all season, but their first real chance to kind of show off tonight in a more high minutes, and in the first six and a half minutes of the game, Xander Lazowski scored seven points, and then Noah Lazowski just kind of kept coming back into the game. Coach Siebert never went away from him, and Noah Lazowski just kept rewarding him with more and more dimes, finally working his way back to seven assists. Yeah, and Luke, and guess who's two, back? Two Watertown adults now up there in front of the student section. I don't know if that... I think the other guy's just sitting there. Is that Pete? Coach Pete? No, it's no, not, it's not, good. not no, Coach it's Pete. Not, not quite. Pete, no. He does have some hair on top of his head. Shout Pete's out to the girls wrestling team, Badger Large Conference champs. That's right. Regional's down here tomorrow. Tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. if you're interested in some wrestling. I believe we'll have that broadcasted for you on OCA Media. Maybe. Uh, that isn't confirmed, but I know for sure if you guys want to come watch some wrestling in person, come on down. Schweffel gets Carl in the air, but misses. Noah Lazowski the rebound. Again, 9 a.m., it's gonna be team regionals and individual regionals. You wanna see Kate Aberg and Evan Fahey go to work. Come on down as well. I believe it's also girls regionals tomorrow. I think it's a double Thank right. regional. Thank you, right. We do have the girls game also on for you tomorrow night as a bad miss there from Caleb Hurtgen, or say Calvin Hurtgen but I do not actually believe they're streaming the wrestling match. Carvala can't come up with the block, but Schweffel missed it. I think he did get a piece of that, actually, Lou. He might have. Again, turnover. This time, Carvala won't be able to scramble. It'll be Hoffer versus Hayes. Hayes finishes this time. Tough finish by Hayes. This time, stayed in the air very long. And that's gotta be a foul. Hayes gets the elbow into Hoffer. Xander Lazowski, Nolan Erfer check in for Noah Lazowski and Mason Hoffer. Man, what a showing. If that's Noah Lazowski's final whistle tonight, man, what a performance from him. Seven assists, two, two points. points, a couple rebounds in there as well. Mac Hayes out of the game for the Goslings. Jacob Hurtgen back in. It's Carvala spinning past Schweffel. Rebound is loose. Erfurth could not come up with it. 
Brett Schweffel does for the Goslings. Watertown down 13, less than four to go. Jacob Hurchin spins inside and finishes. Probably could have maybe been a foul there as well. Diaz and Wallink very close to the arm of Mac or of uh, Hurchin there. Erfurth collects the loose ball, in some trouble now. He finds Xander Lazowski back to the corner for Wallink. Wallink jab step, he works inside with the right and finishes Grant Wallink. I believe his seventh point of the night, sixth and seventh, maybe even eighth and ninth. Not 100% sure, here's Schweffel, head fake to the free throw line, kick to the corner, Hurchin, his three is no good, and Wallink the rebound. What a great performance from Grant Wallink tonight. On and off the stat sheet. Carvala, five on four now. Kicks to Wallank. Wallank's three, no good. Another one that was on the line for the Panthers but didn't quite fall. Cam Krantz the rebound. Back in transition come the Goslings. Schwaffel, he works baseline, now spins back up. Pass Carvala, kick to the corner. Hurtgen, wide open triple, had plenty of time but missed it short. Erfurth comes down with it, is fouled by Cam Kranz. Noah Lazowski will check back in here as well as Reese Camerith and Mack Hayes. Lazowski gonna take the place here of Nolan Erfurth for Watertown. Cam Kranz and, and uh, Braden Schmidt take a seat. 2.45 to go. Four seniors and Vaughn Carvalho will finish this one. Of course, Henry, not the senior night he wanted, but again, a great season for him. Let's not put it bluntly, he's paid great. He has been a great rebounder this year. He's scored in big moments. He's got his first couple of varsity dunks as well. Went from a guard to a big man and did not disappoint whatsoever, playing that great role as a big man. Ball is loose, Xander Lazowski commits the foul with 2.22 to go. That was the Panthers' first foul in the bonus, so I believe free throws coming here for Calvin, uh, Calvin Hurtman. That's Xander's third foul in about 12 minutes of play. 12 or 14 minutes, something like that for Xander. Hurchin does connect on the front end. Cuts the lead down to 12. Oregon student section getting the Hoosier barber chant going there for Calvin Hurchin. We're getting a football chant going at a basketball game, huh? That's interesting. Hey, we both finished with the same record, guys. Let's relax. Had two wins in the last uh, two wins in the last 900 days. A lot of talk over there in the student section for the football team in Watertown, right there. Shot is no good for Mac Hayes. A lot of talk for a team that's won two games in three seasons. It's not gonna lie. Travel there from Hayes. You can complain all you want, guys, but it's a 13-point game with under two to go. Pack it up and go back to Watertown. Got the travel safely chant going. A lot of them, I don't know what the chant is over. They can't even hear it. Not very loud. Carvala to the cup to hey! finish. Hey! Carvala on one hop, jumped from about 15 feet. Again, they're no good. Here comes Carvala again in transition. This time, good assist, Lazowski finishes. Bring the lead to 17. Xander, nine points. Has Xander made all his shots? Is he four for four? I don't think he's missed. Okay. Did he heat check a second? I don't know, I know so. he didn't. Noah's uh, over Noah's two. Noah's missed a couple times. Get Xander wide again. open. Give me 11, yes, Xander Lazowski oh. points. That's double digits. Watertown's gonna empty the bench here. 69 to 52, the Panthers all over the Goslings, poking it away. It's Wallank who will run in transition and a take foul there. From Mac Hayes, timeout Panthers for subs. Diaz to the bench and Carvalho to the bench. Hanneman didn't check in. Uh, he's checking in for shooter. They got the I believe that we have one Chan out of the way right there. They'll do a na na Chan as well. Send these Watertown fans back to Watertown with a, another loss. This has, been, 15. this has been the craziest high school basketball game I think I've ever seen. 
one of. One of, one of. I would say De probably no, the second the weirdest. most. Definitely, definitely the, the weirdest. weirdest. There's yeah, been I, I so say many weird things going on. A middle school student section led by a middle-aged man versus our student section. Wallank again, that time leaves it short. I believe Grant with 12 points. Now another really good performance for the Panthers senior. Unfortunately, Carson Hanneman did not get check in. Shot three there is no good. That's number 23, Thomas Goleman. Comes Noah Lazowski, timeout for subs. Will Schmidt and Hanneman back into the game. Going to see ah. Grant Wallank out, a big hand for him. And I believe that's Noah Lazowski as well. What a performance, man. Seven so assists. many dimes. Two points. What a showing from both Lazowski brothers, man. A special senior night for these two. Nobody expected this, and you just love to see love it. Love to see it. Here's Carson Hanneman. Finds Will Schmidt. Now to Xander Lazowski. Xander Lazowski sitting at 11 points. It's Kans Kisaw, the six foot seven center for the Panthers. Finds Hanneman. Hanneman inside the right hand. Will not go. Rebound loose and controlled by the Goslings. That's number two, Gavin Stavarius. Here's Davis Cashin for the Goslings. Gets Lazowski in the air. They dump it off down low. There's Dylan O'Brien. Kick, shot three, and connecting is Davis Cashin. We'll cut the lead to 15, and I believe that is where we will end this thing. With 10 seconds left, Lazowski and Kesaw will hold this one to get it out. Can hold now as Xander Lazowski will hold to end it. 11 points for Xander Lazowski. Now here's the guy. Definitely the weirdest game I have ever been a part of, Luke. Yeah, uh, it was a wild game, wasn't it, guys? And 70 to 55 is your final. Panthers get a dub and get back on track, improving now to 13 and 7 on the year. Guys, we'll have another broadcast for you tomorrow night. That's going to be a Lady Panther game. Looking to improve to 22 and 0 are the Lady Panthers against a forest at home. And for now, guys, it's time to send you off. I've been Luke Marks. Alongside me was Cole Krieger. We got Miles Tallon and Jordan Haig, Ben George, Will Mayo, and our producer and director, Josiah Wampler and Paul Swicker. Again, I'm Luke Marks, and we will see you tomorrow night. Have a great night, everyone. This is a presentation of OCA Media Sports. This exclusive broadcast of Panther Sports is made possible in part with support from our generous sponsors. The Village of Oregon, a great place to live, work, and play. The Oregon School District, actively building competency, character, culture, and community. The Oregon Athletic Booster Club, doing great things for all Panther sports. Your membership dues directly support our student athletes. Consider becoming a booster today. The Oregon Area Cares Community Coalition. Parenting teens is hard. We're here to help. OregonAreaCares.org. Wisco Industries, proud supporter of Panther sports. Celebrating our 75th anniversary in 2024. Culver's of Oregon, welcome to delicious. Stoughton Health, and by Pizza Pit. We are a part of something great. Want to be a part of, of something great? The, the Oregon, Oregon Athletic Booster Club needs your help. It means providing student-athletes with positive experiences to help them succeed on and off the court. Make sure I have the right gear and equipment I need to succeed. Your donation will create a lasting impact in our community. With your donations, you will help me in achieving my goals. We need your support. We are part of something great.
kids put skis on as they were learning to walk. I want my kids to be able to have those moments with their kids. Being a scientist, I'm worried about climate change in so many different ways for my kids. From the second you have a child, you want to do everything to protect them. I think our action on climate change is no different. It's just an extension of being a mom. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat apples and bananas? Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. with this group. My name is Mrs. Yeager and I teach the bands and jazz studies and percussion ensemble here at OHS. We have three selections for you today. Um, the first is called The Curly-Headed Plow Boy. It's a third movement from a suite of English country dances by Pierre Laplante. And Pierre Laplante is a composer who actually lives in the Oregon area, but he is world famous. So it's kind of neat to have a hometown person represented on the program today. Our second piece is called Night Song, and uh, there's a lot of interpretation for you that can be le left up to your imagination. It very much paints a musical picture for the listener um, of a setting at night of your internal choosing. So we hope you enjoy that one too. And then our last one is called Rocket Ship by Kevin Day. Kevin Day is a, a newer and up and coming composer. He's um, probably one of the most prolific African American young composers. Um, that's writing for wind bands today. So those are our three selections for you. We'll start with the curly-headed cowboy. Thank you. 
Okay, so, wasn't that beautiful? Yeah, so tell us, like, what kind of things does that conjure for you, students? Like, just throw some, like, what images, what kind of things did you see in your brain? Swirling wind. Swirling wind. Fog. Did I hear dark clouds? Disney? Nice. Did anybody, did anybody have any emotions that came to mind? Scary? Any happy ones out there? Epic? Sad? Anybody, did anybody feel sad during that song? You did? Okay. Yeah. You cried a little bit. On the inside, I bet, right? Yeah. Okay. So the point is, thank you for, for talking with me a little bit. Um, so the point is, is that it's up to everybody's interpretation, right? That's, like, that's the beautiful thing about music. It's also the beautiful thing about art. Did anybody go to the art exhibition um, over the last couple of days yet? If you haven't checked out the art exhibition, please do so in the, in the art gallery. Um, art, music, it's all up to interpretation. One person might see something completely differently than another. And one person might hear something completely differently than another. How many of you, okay, this is, I know this is like a super loaded question, but how many of you listen to the exact same type of music as your parents? Okay, I see some hands and that's, so either you have really cool parents or you are really cool, okay? Um, so anyway, the point is, is that all music is up to interpretation, right? And like, I used to listen to, when I was 17, I used to pretty much like exclusively listen to like Snoop Dogg and Tupac. Yeah. And my father, my father, every time he had to like get in my car to move my car, he'd be like, I don't understand why you listen to this trash, right? And I'm like, Dad, it's got a sweet beat to it, right? Like, I'm trying to explain this to him, why I like that style of music. Um, but to him, it just wasn't his thing, right? It was my thing at the time. And I still love that music, but I also love this music too. So it's like food in a way, that you wanna vary the tastes that you have, right? Like keep your mind open, keep your ears open, keep your eyes open to what's happening in the world around you, and stay curious about it, ask questions about it, think about it, let it sink in, right? Instead of saying, oh, I only like this one type of music, or I only like this one type of art, or this one type of food. I'll only eat chicken nuggets for the rest of my life. That sounds like a sad existence to me, but that's okay. All right, so our last piece that we have for you is called Rocket Ship. <clears throat> We're gonna play it in just a second. Um, does anybody have questions about the instruments that they see on stage today? Like you're not sure what it is or you want to know more about it? Because there are a couple out here that are not traditional, like they're not, they're not always included in the band. And I wonder if there's some people that might have questions about it. Um, let's go back here. Go ahead, nice and loud. Uh, what's the thing on the left, the far left? Is that, is that Henry back there? Yeah. All right, Henry, good question. So Abby, can you tell them about this instrument really quick? Um, so this is a contrabass clarinet. I usually play B flat clarinet like these lovely people are playing, but um, this transpose is the same, which basically means that you can read um, the same music and play with the same, you know, the same fingerings and it comes out with the same notes. It's just, I believe, two octaves lower. So you have, you've probably seen bass clarinets. This is just a step below a bass clarinet. Thanks, Abby. And going along with that, I'm gonna come over here because uh, Lee is also playing a type of contra bass, but it's called a contra alto, okay? Um, so, uh, June, can you hold up your clarinet just real quick? So this is like the standard, regular B-flat clarinet, and then the next is the alto clarinet, which is like halfway in between a regular clarinet and a bass clarinet, and then there's a bass clarinet, and then there's the contra alto clarinet, which is an octave lower than the alto clarinet. Go ahead and hold it up, please. So it's getting closer to the size of Abby's, okay? Um, Lee also plays this 
regular size clarinet as well. And then after this clarinet comes that one, just in size. So they go from like smaller to bigger to bigger to bigger. What other questions do you have? Yeah, right there. Yes, okay, so there are, there are also like crazy instruments in the world that there's only like a handful of them, like the sub contrabass saxophone that literally lives in a museum and only gets checked out to the best players in the world for like certain performances, it's ridiculous. So these instruments are, I mean, probably six figures, like $200,000 a piece, because they're all handmade, hand hammered, right? Um, and But they sound so low that you almost can't hear it, you can only feel it. Isn't it? Yeah, so like when you like when you get in your car and you put on a, like a really great, like a song that has really great bass to it, and you like feel it more than you really hear it, that's kind of what those subcontra bass uh, instruments sound like, so. Okay, we'll take uh, one or two more. One or two more questions? Yes, back middle. Oh yeah, the chimes. Can you wave, Cameron? Cameron, go ahead and play. Go ahead and play the chimes real quick. Just play a couple notes. Sound familiar? Sounds like kind of like church bells, right? So those are called the chimes or the tubular bells. Was that what you were talking about? Did I get your question answered? All right, one more question? Yes. Uh, what's the bowl of that Will Smith play? That is the Barry saxophone. Go ahead and hold it up, Will. So that is the lowest, <laughs> that's the lowest saxophone in the family that is like traditionally written for, for concert band. But there are lower saxophones than that one. The next one down from that is the bass saxophone. Um, we don't own a bass saxophone, but um, my husband who teaches band in Madison at Bell Phillips Memorial High School, um, if you know anybody who's in band over there, they have a bass saxophone. Um, so it's lower even than that one. We don't, nobody in Wisconsin owns a sub bass saxophone. But if you go online and you look up some of these like crazy instruments, it's really fascinating, so. All right, I think with that then, we're gonna finish up with our last song, Rocket Ship by Kevin Day. Check him out. Check out these composers if you get a chance, because they're doing some really cool stuff. Always oh, just thanks for being a great audience, okay? Have a good rest of your day.
major emergency? Everyone's on their way. What happened? When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover all the things that make them unique. And your mother. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love.
everybody, and welcome to uh, period seven. We have jazz studies here for you. Yeah, let's do it. Let's clap it up. We have a mix of styles from swing to uh, funk rock to uh, ballads and salsa music to share with you today. So we're going to kick it off with a jazz standard by Duke Ellington called Take the A Train. Um, one thing I want to say quick about Duke Ellington, and it's important that you should know his name. He's one of the most influential names in jazz to ever live. And he was also a very powerful jazz musician in uh, he used his influence to improve the lives of other black jazz musicians in this country. Um, he did that through exerting his influence in ways such as um, if there were musicians, black musicians that weren't being treated fairly by certain clubs, then he, he would say, well, we're not gonna play at your club then. Either you do these eight items to provide good housing and good food for these musicians, or we're not gonna play your club. So the clubs, of course, wanted Duke Ellington to come and play there because he was one of the most popular jazz musicians of all time. So they had to raise their standards. So that's how he exerted his power and influence to make uh, the lives of black musicians better. Enjoy Take the A Train.
Emmett Marson on the trumpet and Lincoln Hoy on the alto saxophone, everybody. Carson Knott on piano. This next tune's a shuffle. It has a sweet name. It's called Filthy McNasty.
music. So Gus Sampson on the Barry saxophone, Lyra as a party on the alto saxophone, Lincoln Hoy on the alto saxophone, Henry Burmeister on the tenor saxophone, Emmett Marson on the trumpet, and Elliot Les Browns on the drums. Did I get everybody? Give it up. Oh, and Alice Nelson on the trumpet, sorry. A lot of people on that one. Now for something completely different. This is a ballad. It's called In a Sentimental Mood. It probably was made most famous, you might know it, um, from Ella Fitzgerald singing this one.
One more time for Henry Burnmeister on the tenor saxophone and Emmett Marson on trumpet and flugelhorn, everybody. Give it up.
Give it up for the soloist on that tune. Just go, just give it up. We want to get the last time too. <laughs> All right, we think you might know this next one. This is our last tune, and then we'll take questions at the end if people want to ask about jazz. Enjoy. up a little bit. Thank you so much. So our jazz studies meets every day and you can see we have um, not necessarily instrumentation that you might just think about for bands all the time. Um, we have piano, we have guitar, we have bass. Um, sometimes we have upright bass as well as uh, electric bass. We have drum sets. Sometimes we also have vibraphones or other like congas, hand drums, percussion instruments. And uh, then we have a full row of saxophones here, and then trombone parts and trumpet parts. What questions do you have for us? Yes? That one is, it don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing, by Duke Ellington. So you might recognize that. How many of you have heard that song before, recognize that song? Yeah, right? Yeah, that one's. Is that in the, Miss Yancey, is it in that music? But that'd be a misdirected question. We can, we can check for you. What other questions? Yeah. So there can be any instrument can play jazz. So this is more of a traditional instrumentation, but Addie, can you hold up your euphonium? So like Addie plays the euphonium um, and the bassoon and the cello, um, and probably piano too, if I had to guess. Um, but the euphonium reads the same parts as the trombone part. So like a violin could read C parts for jazz. An oboist could read C parts for jazz. Um, you know, like any any instrument can play jazz. It's just a matter of you know finding the right arrangements or the teacher like arranging the music um, so that it works for every instrument. Yeah. A vibraphone is. Um, have you guys ever seen like a xylophone before? Okay, so a vibraphone is a lot like a xylophone, but the bars are metal and they have a there's a pedal that when you you can press on the pedal and you can hit the bars with a mallet and it rings for a really long time. And they even have like electric motors that can make it sound like a wah, 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 wah. Yeah. 
Um, any other questions? Yeah. Do you want more? Okay, that's all right. All right, then we have, yes. Yes, it is possible to join. So first thing you wanna do is you wanna just come and, and see me. Um, I'm in the band room right over here most, all the time. Um, come and tell me what you play or what you'd be interested in playing because a lot of these folks are playing an instrument that's not their primary instrument either. Um, so we've got a couple clarinetists that are playing saxophone. Um, like we said, Addie's a bassoon player but also plays euphonium. Um, so there's, there's Charles plays very saxophone in band but also plays bass. Um, he's also a rock star, so like there's all sorts of different options. Um, Carson plays the cello, you know. Um, so come and talk to me, and then we'll get you. We'll figure out instrumentation, and then we'll get you get you all signed up with your council. Yeah. 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 Triangles can be in jazz for sure. Yeah. Nope. No, not really. You just, with triangles, you figure out, there's tons of different types of triangles and then you figure out the sound that you want and you can get thicker, thinner triangles and thicker, thinner beaters, so. All right, well, you have been a lovely audience. We're gonna stop a couple minutes early so that we can make the changeover for Noteworthy, who's coming on for next hour. So thank you so much. Um, listen to your teacher's instructions if they want you to stay put for the next four minutes here. Thank you.
speaking through? Can we check the, all right, I think we're checking. All the mics are powered up. Okay. I have them turned off in the sound booth, but yeah. Cool, yeah, power them on. So then if you catch this, turn that radio out where it's like just like three of people walk up and you're like, wait, it's not that on now. What? I should turn back on the old. Every, no, just on the mic. Okay. The mic should be on. Yeah. Perfect. Um, oh, sorry, hold on. Okay, so, um, yeah, they're just going to start the recording. Thanks for watching OCA. Thanks for watching OCA. Thanks for watching OCA. Thanks for watching OCA. You know, how you feel on the inside hmm? is just as important to me as how you feel on the outside. Aw, oh, Daddy. I've <laughs> grown up, grown up, every way and every way.
retreats. Um, we have two uh, ensembles that you're going to hear. One uh, is a barbershop quartet um, comprised of the people that you just saw in uh, Note Ruby. Um, barbershop quartet. Anyone see music band when we did it? Of course you did, McKenna. Um, <laughs> it's a style, it's a genre of music with really tight harmonies. You have a bass, a baritone, a lead voice who has the melody, and a tenor. Um, and so these four people got together and worked their uh, worked really hard and performed this quartet at Solo and Ensemble Festival in March, and they qualified for state. Uh, and so we're going to take a listen to uh, what they have to do. And I still can't remember the title of their song. Mr. Metal, what's the title of their song? Oh, am I supposed to know that? Yes, I sure am. Um, you pick the song. Can't believe we're breaking up, baby. Don't treat me this way. I don't know. It's called love. Up. It's Something called love. About. And what? breaking up. <laughs> and breaking up, exactly. Like all the good songs. Is the quartet ready? Yeah. Yes, they are ready. Please welcome the Oregon High School Barbershop Quartet.
your arranging. Who does the arranging? Nate Mendel! Our PAC director, Nate Mendel, arranges the music. How do you learn the music? I know, but how? Like, do you just come in and read it down, or do you have sectionals, or? So, uh, 
And when do you rehearse? Here. When, honey? Oh, when? I can answer that. It's freaking time.